Flappers Burbank tomorrow night. The 10 p.m. show still has tickets. So that is um, July 15th at Flappers in Burbank. I'm going to be in Salt Lake City, Utah at Wise Guys, July 16th and 17th. The Tempe Improv um, on August 6th and 8th. I'm going to be at Caroline's on Broadway, August 12th through 14th. Um, and then go to AnnieLetterman.com for a bunch of other dates that I'm not going to waste your time with. Hey, you guys, I am finally coming back on the road. I can't believe it, but I'm coming to Florida all over the place. October 12th, I'll be at the Improv Comedy Theater in Tampa, Florida. And October 13th, I'll be at the Orlando Improv. And October 14th, Dania Point Improv in Dania Beach, Florida. I'm really excited. And also, we have a new drop this week for Sleepover by Esther. Go to sleepoverbyesther.com. I'm very excited for you to see the very nice Made in LA hand-dyed loungewear also my picture that i drew that got stolen and ripped as a meme everywhere i finally have taken back the night and put it on t-shirts you can get them at annieletterman.com this is actually my first boyfriend i've lived with period so it's like the first guy that like wanted to move in with me period so i knew it was meant to be because no one ever lived i never lived with anyone Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, at 32, so. My, yeah, my boyfriend, I mean, it was like, we started dating the month before the pandemic, so it was like, <laughs> I was like trying to get him not to move in. He kept bringing like his PlayStation, like things that were like plugged in. I'm like, why is this plugged in? And then I was like, the minute the pandemic hit, I was like, if you leave, I'll die. Like, yeah. you have to stay. And I always tell him, I'm like, I know it's mean, but I'm like, I would have dumped you. I would have broken up with him. <laughs> yeah, and it I wasn't do, like, it I wasn't in a that healthy phase. way. Yeah. No, but I think that's, yeah, he, it's almost like he was forced to prove himself very fast, yeah. and he did, and but I went beyond. I didn't want to say I love you till the pandemic was over because I was like scared. It was just like panda right. because mm -hmm. of the pandemic. But then I like couldn't help it. But I was scared for like a week after we said it. I was like, <gasps> <laughs> you thought I was like jinx you? you or what? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I just got like scared. I've never been scared of saying I love you. Me neither. In I fact, right away. Never, start, never said it to me. This last, huh. this starting with Dave, <laughs> like I had to in my head, like the first two months, be like, don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. Let him say it first. Like I had to keep it in. Well, it's oh, always, really? it's always so awkward too when you are feeling the love feelings for someone because I, for me, I say I love you to like the bank teller and stuff. So I'm yeah. saying like I love you to everyone. I'm like I love you, I love you, and then I'm like skipping over him. I'm like you're cool. I love you, I love you. <laughs> Wait, um, what is the? How did you say? How did you guys say I love you to your partner? Are you asking her in like in Hebrew? What is it? <laughs> Any of habit? Oh, you know it. You're yeah. so much better. Any of habit that's Moshe. I always like say that to him. I was like, I just like, I love him. Do you remember when you guys first exchanged I love yous with your partners? I don't even know if Moses says I love you. He he grew up like not saying I love you to people. Like he doesn't oh, say wow. I love you, but he's very like loving and does mm -hmm. so much for me. So I don't really care. I say I love you all the time. I I I don't even know if he's ever said it. <laughs> like I'm trying to think if there's I'm sure he has, but he just never says it. And people always call it out on videos too. Like he she never she always says I love you to him and never says it back, which it bothered me at first, but now like doesn't. Is well he, that might not be his love language. Yeah, yeah he are doesn't. You saying yeah. He like he doesn't express it verbally, but just like actions. And yeah. Things like that. yeah. He's super like Better. yeah, everything else. Acts of service, mm -hmm. cuddly, touchy, like all that stuff like that. But like he just never says I love you to anyone, like his anything. Yeah. What's yours? What's I your mean, love I, language? I really want acts of service. And I think we all know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just want to be like fed. But what do you settle for? <laughs> Availability. <laughs> any time, not quality time, just any time. <laughs> quantity time. Um, quantity accept, time. Uh, quality time. Yeah. Um, which I don't get a lot of because Bobby has a very um, is I think it's called like dismissive avoidant kind oh, of personality. Yeah, what is that? Um, it's basically um, exactly how it how it sounds. Um, it's like. He has very few really deep, deep relationships. He's in one with me, but still his he's very incapable of really like um, showing it in like a, a sincere way. I can't really explain was he, it. Was he enmeshed with his mom? Was his mom like overbearing or his dad or something? Can no, but very abusive um, yeah. childhood. Oh. So um, yeah, uh, problems or feelings are very like, we, we don't do that yeah. you know I feel like I sense that in him and every time I see him the way I show him I respect him is I just like barely speak to him I'm like, and that's and his think, honestly that's the best thing to do to him like oh, he, I try to fix him I'm like Bobby <laughs> let's sit down you gotta just have a little more self confidence <laughs> Yesterday I was like, I asked him if he wanted me to watch his set and give him notes and he was like, God no and I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> I like, God, no. 
Trish, you're really familiar with the comedy community. <laughs> that last last podcast last is all po- bleeped out. <laughs> <laughs> that was and then a- I saw your guys' podcast, like, what was bleeped out? I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> that was the funniest shit. I was in tears when you just, the shock on Bobby's face when you were just, like, just throwing names out there was the best thing I've ever heard. Well, to know yeah. about the comedy community and not, like, have to work Worry, with them yeah. is, like, them. such yeah. an amazing, beautiful thing. I know. We were, like, all at home cheering you on. <laughs> oh, my gosh, really? Because yeah. I, I wondered that when you guys asked me on, and I was like, I know you guys are, are all connected to it. So I was like, I wonder how that is because you have to be on, like, good terms. And obviously people probably, like, hate me and they're like, this dumb bitch, you know? We should just bleep out what we say back to her. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if we give a th- like blur out, or do we give a thumbs up or a thumbs down? I'm all, I'm Every- all <laughs> Everything was bleeped last time, which is fine. Honestly. Do you remember like eleven years ago yeah. we met twice? Do you know this? I wait. What? We should be doing a newlywed game with you guys. I know for real. <laughs> what is? What I didn't even know what that is. Or you is. just like ask questions like, do you, do you remember? Do you remember? Yeah. She's too young for the newlywed. <laughs> We're old enough. Nick and remember Jessica? she said she was old and was. Oh my god. Wait, are you guys older than me? Or not older yes, than us? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah by at least five sisters. years. Oh, okay. we're the babies Are we the today? same age? Yeah. Are you 88? Were yeah. You 80? Oh, okay. So we're like literally, what is your sign sign? Pisces. Oh, okay. I thought we were like so similar because when you were saying like access service and when you move in right away, I was like, oh my God, are you a Taurus too? Oh, I thought you were here. yield. That's what I always get from you. <laughs> yield. <laughs> <laughs> we're both from Illinois, which I just oh, realized yeah. you're from there too. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm from like Rockford, like Northern Illinois. I'm from Chicago suburbs. Both wearing like, denim. Oh, know, yeah. Oh, my God. We're denim. really on NSYNC today. <laughs> no, the, the oldies are wearing sweatpants. <laughs> I love <laughs> it. just like, Ugh. You guys look comfy, though. <laughs> I gotta what what do up. you remember of meeting me? Should you go first? Because I don't want to embarrass myself. Okay. Wait. We met twice. Okay. Wait. No. This does sound so familiar. Because we met once definitely at the comedy store. Yes. Yeah. You were with that, like, really old guy. Oh, you were, like, the oh, little God. kid. <laughs> You were the little kid that went on stage, and I thought you were like actually a child. And I was like, "Why is she in here?" Oh my god! Yeah. She's talking about Don Barris. Yeah, I'm oh, so yeah. glad she wasn't talking about Dave or something. I got like so worried. It was oh no, be this insult. guy was like, no, old. Dave's young looking. Oh, okay, yeah, I just remember, and it was like up in the upstairs room, and it was like really, really late. I'm not even sure why I was there. Was I like in the audience? Like, I'm, I don't know even how we met. You were there. You were there with your mom, and I oh, okay. I don't remember much. Like, it's very blurry, but yes, I just same. remember you were there, and everyone loved you and thought you were so fun and exciting. And I can't remember if I already knew of you before or if this was, like, the first time, but you definitely, yeah. like, seemed very special, and, like, you and your mom were super fun. But I remember being in the downstairs room in the original room. Oh, okay. So maybe – but that makes sense. Maybe you watched it upstairs, like, you were floating around. Yeah. And then the other memory I have was – This is so random. I have such a clear picture of it, but I don't remember where it was, but it was at an audition. I don't know for what. Yeah. Way out somewhere like in, like somewhere way far out in the valley. We were auditioning to play their mothers. (laughs) (laughs) Their their fathers, maybe? It was definitely like a super shady audition, like off casting website. Yeah, like LA casting or something. (laughs) Yeah, but I just remember being like, oh, that's that girl again. And then I found you online somehow and started following you. And then that was it. No, like 10 years. I remember seeing you on Crazy Ex Girlfriend. I was just like, oh my God, like she really crushed it. Because I just remember like I thought you were this little kid and you were going up there playing this little kid thing. And I was like, why is this little kid with this old man in the comedy store? Like it was just so weird and I remember you then you played it up on stage like you were even more like a little kid I was just like this is so and then I saw you it's like oh she's like on everything like it was really crazy yeah well I wonder if like I saw you and just was like oh my god like Pam Anderson like all my like blonde like queen vibes <laughs> yeah. in one and that's why I like really stuck out yeah, to you. You are fun. very much Esther's type. Yeah. <laughs> to I the on Instagram. But also yeah. like honestly your hair, your makeup, your out- I'm probably going to come next week dressed like you. It's going to be so weird. I'm not going to quite pull it off. But uh, I'm gonna need your silicone. You need my silicone. <laughs> oh yeah, I want to see her. Oops. I started to feel weird with them and I, actually the truth is as soon as I had them on I woke up from surgery, I hated them. Hmm. I was like, oh my God, this was a mistake. Because I have sort of like a, a, and I love my body, but it is sort of this like boyish body. And it's always worked out with with the clothes, with the style that I go for. When I got boobs, I couldn't, I had to change my whole style to this type of girl that I just didn't vibe with. Also, I started to feel sick. I started having like heart palpitations, stuff like that. So I was like, two years in, I was like, out you go. Was it because you were so yeah. hot in the mirror? You're like, oh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Wait, so you had, did you have the illness, breast implant illness? Like, um, Well, you know how that's like all right now, like anecdotal. Like I think I did. Oh. Um, but Esther saw them. 
Yeah, I think when I first met you, you had Did them. you grab them immediately? I think I did. Oh, yeah. I pulled you in the bathroom and said, can I see? You didn't pull me in the bathroom <laughs> at all. You, we were, there was no bathroom scene. You were in public. There were people in the room. Oh. And like, let me see your boobs. Yeah. Can you flash them like all out? Well, Esther does this thing where oh she'll flash God. hers first. Uh-oh. So hopefully you do the same, but I didn't bite. I think Uh-oh. Esther and I pulled like one of each tit when out When I the same met time. Annie, I knew, I knew of her. So I knew I was like, I'm just going to pull her shirt down. Oh, my God. I love that. I pulled hers up. She pulled mine down. <laughs> I love flashing people too. But like now it's like you can't do that. Like I was flashing people and they're like, no, you can't do that anymore. I was like, really? Like I always think it's so fun. But I guess people 2021. Well, I so... feel bad when I was in high school, I used to do it to people. We would like flash people and then you get stuck at a red light. You're like, oh, shit. <laughs> I love it. I wish, like, I wish, I wish we could just like, fl- I mean, do you still do it? I mean, I wish we could just still do I it. Was... I always did it. And then when I started dating the guy I'm with now, he was like, I don't think you should keep doing that. Well, I thought I my boobs flashing. were like so little that it was like not. I was like, it's like a Polish boy or whatever. But I saw <laughs> there were like guy friends I had where I would flash them and I'd watch like our relationship change in like a split second. Like they'd be like, oh, and I was like, oh no. It turned them off? Yeah. No, it turned them on and then it was like so bonery. It was oh. like, <laughs> You're just like, no. gross. It's so funny. Boobs to me aren't like super erotic. I like looking at them, but they're not like an erotic thing. That's why I like always didn't mind flashing them. I think they're funny. Yeah, like, me too. Yeah, I think they're, they're funny. funny. Yeah, I think they're cute. I was though. thinking today on the ride over that's so weird we're talking about this. Like, <laughs> If you guys, like, if we were men, right, and, like, born men, we took our, and would you just be Do not assume anything of me. <laughs> I know, I was, like, born, I was, like, I don't know what you are, really, but, um, but would you be topless all the time? Would you be, like, without a shirt? No, because my nipples are so sensitive. The thought of, like, the wind against them makes me, like, scared. Is it really? I I just feel like you have, like, hairy nipples and you have someone <laughs> don't want us to know. I so have like, super pretend. hairy nipples. No, I have hairy nipples. Hairy? I have hair in my nipples, oh. coarse ones that I this have to pluck out monthly. Do you really like, not mm. have that? No. I mean, I have my nipples are fucked. I'm not going to lie. They're like stitch. I like to flash you right now. They're stitch. They're scars. It's fucked. But I've never had hair there. I guess we all have our things. Mine are like <laughs> scarred. And mine's like literally one's up here and one's down here. Like, for real. For real. Wait, why? Do you have fake boobs? Yeah, I had fake oh. boobs. I had like three lifts. I've gotten three different implants. Yeah, my boobs were fucked. Like the first time I had my boobs, like they were uneven. And one was like D cup, one was like A cup. Like they were just really uneven. When so. you were, bo- the ones you were born with? Yeah, yeah, they were so, one was like literally a D cup in like middle school and one was like a B cup. So they were like super, and they were really floppy. They pointed down, nipples huge. I used to have the biggest nipples. So I got those cut down. Like, so now they're just really like messed up. Although I still think they're funny to like flash or whatever. But <laughs> yeah. I've never had the hair, but maybe because I've had implants for so long, maybe the hair just Maybe like, that's what they took out, the part of the nipple they took out was the hair be. growing part. I don't have any sensitivity. You could like squeeze them and I cannot feel them. Yeah. <laughs> so I have the opposite. Esther's of seen some things happen in that very chair. <laughs> Oh, we really? She re-pierced her nipple in front of me. It was horrible. Yeah. I had put these hoops in my <gasps> nipple holes and some white stuff came out and she was upset. Oh. And, and I smelled them and Esther was upset. It was actually that. honestly the best episode ever. Now See that I'm thinking saying? about like it. Yeah. <laughs> that, so that's why we gave her a little bell. We gave her a bell. If it's too much for her, she rings her I bell. I love that too. <laughs> I'm louder than the bell though, so I don't care. Wait, since <laughs> she doesn't we're hear getting, that. since we're veering Decibel. towards sexual, I have a question you don't have to answer, but I feel... Like the way Moses looks at you and treats you, I'm like, what is their sex life like? Like they must be so, it must be so fucking good. Uh, like, are you allowed to say? Compl- yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's nothing bad. I love talking about sex. I mean, I always, it's so funny. No, we used to be like banging all the time. But like, this is like, I, like I was telling you, it was like my first relationship where I like live with someone. So I feel like the sex goes down way more. Not as, I mean, we still like do like twice a day. But like when we first what? met, like quarantine. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> is that on. a lot? Or, I feel like that's not a lot anymore. I feel bad. We do it at night before bed and morning when we wake up. And I feel like there should be more spontaneous sex. It's literally like, all right, don't Time want, to like, fuck, you know? Yeah. yeah, I feel like, and then in the morning, okay, they're hard to fuck. And then that's it. And then I'm like, we should probably do it. We should be so spontaneous. And yeah. he, we used to do it all the time. But I think that comes from like when you live with someone, you just know it's there. As opposed to when I didn't live with him, I was like, I you like, like want that you want to like get them with your pussy kind of. You're yeah. Like, right. Yeah. You're like, it's like for another thing. Yeah. I want to go. Todd and I were talking about, I want to go to, um, we want to do like Tantra weekends and different like weird sex. Uh-huh. Things. Wait, what is, I know Tantra sex, but what is a Tantra weekend? They have like weekends where you go with your person and they have different like stuff. I mean, I don't know. We don't. Are you looking for a person? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to- with a little bit of a bigger finger than that, I hope. <laughs> oh, yeah, your fingers are so tiny. Oh, my She's gosh. so little. They're going to go in Kalila at some point. She's coming with me, bitch. <laughs> Those are fingers. Two times a day? 
Yes. Is this a lot or a little? It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Okay. Really? It's good. Wait, That's healthy though. New. That's good. I'm yeah. Gonna... We like yeah, it has only been a year. So you're pr- it's like super hot still. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, and the thing is too, we have like fun things at our house. So we have like little like wedges and stuff. That's like our favorite thing to stack up because he's like an architect, so he builds furniture. So he like <laughs> stacks up these wedges. So my body will be like in a Z. So it's like really fun because we're trying to have a baby, so we're trying to like push all the like semen down. So I'll be like in a Z position so it can flow down, and it's so fun. <laughs> so it's like a jackhammer. He has my legs like this and it's just like jackhammer like that but I'm, I'm my head's upside down so it's like a rush to the head so like, does really he fun. wake you up or, or does he wake up before you and you just hear like him building There's like <laughs> he's like building like your the ramp. buildings at nighttime I'll usually come upstairs from like watching TV and I'll see like the blocks rearranged and so it's just a different <laughs> position every night and then the morning just like stick it in I love like when guys just stick it in like while I'm sleeping like we used to do it all the time like in the middle of the night I'm like just stick it in like I love getting woken up by like I've had to day. tell my boyfriends that too I'm like listen you have my consent you can just bang me when I'm asleep yeah whatever, like, not night. to sound like crusty but I don't it's not that easy to just slip it in <laughs> wait <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they shove it in. I'm with you. Shove it. Me. Yeah, I like to shove it. Like yeah. I like it when it's dry. Mine is dry you as like a bone. When it's dry? Yeah, to well, the it initial. Wet. Yeah, it get, yeah, it gets wet. Oh my like, god, my dog hospital's calling me. Uh oh. Hello. How are his balls? Did you keep them? Oh. He's got, he's got one and a half balls, by the way. Like one's big, one's normal size. The other oh my god, it's like your ball boobs. Uh, <laughs> uh, one tiny. Normal. Normally, when I give people the balls. I put them in a jar of formalin. It's toxic. Yeah, it's cancerous. So would you rather me just, are you going to keep them forever? If you're going to keep them forever, we should put them well, in Well, let me ask Esther, what do you, I'm giving them to you, so what? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, what do you think I should do, Claire? I think that keep them in the formalin, but you're going to dispose of them because just generally it's going to get I'll gross. probably just show them on the podcast. You can keep them forever in the, in the jar. You okay. can. Why don't you I'll think on it? Portland. Yeah, I'm going to think on it. I, I, can I think on it? Tim told me got $20 million for a Netflix deal. Is that true? Who? <laughs> oh, wow. Tim, who works here, said you got... He's I got money. $20 million <laughs> for a <laughs> Netflix deal? <laughs> wow. No. Yeah, is that, is that, that's not true? No. I can confirm. <laughs> yeah, no, you're true. on my podcast right now. Why are, you, why are you laughing so hard? Because, well, one, you're on my podcast <laughs> and... Oh, I did. You just didn't hear because you were talking so much. (laughs) I've never met. I've never met a person who could chat me out. (laughs) Out chat. Out chat. Chat me out. Ew, that did sound dirty. (laughs) Okay, thank you so much. Uh, no, I don't have that deal either. If you're, you're just making me sound so poor on. Yes, I would love a thumbs up, a like, subscribe. Sub, please. We can really Review. use it. We're renaming it to Randy's Review, Balls. Five star. The podcast. We'll right. give you five, five star for five All star. All right, thank you. Thanks, Dr. Dean. Bye. Bye. Why don't you have a dog? I did have a dog. Yeah, she did. I gave it to my sister. Yeah. yeah. Freaking my ex gave it to me for a vlog. He's like, here's a dog. And I've never owned a dog in my life. And I lived in a little apartment. And I was like, what? How am I? I didn't know how to take care of him. Like, I just fed him all through the night because he kept crying. And then he kept pooping. And I... <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy. He said he got him from like the side of the road from one of those like oh. fake breeders, you know, whatever. Because oh. it's like it's a Pomeranian, and then turned into like this American Eskimo or whatever. It's a big dog. <laughs> we still have him. He <laughs> comes for visitations on the weekends. I just cannot take care of animals. I'm like, I used to be scared of dogs. Now I like love him. But my sister thankfully took him. But I remember he gave him to me in like a video, and I was like, I don't have, I don't want to take care of a dog. I never took care of a dog in my life. I feel so. like that's the worst yeah, gift that's you could horrible. possibly or give. Or a turtle, a turtle, because turtles live so long. Yeah, but. Turtles, turtles will outlive you. Like yes, you're, that's yes. a that's a and you can't cuddle it. Mm-hmm. Right. Or birds are a real big one. Birds, yeah. Because birds are very like like, like a, a bird. A bird. Like a my sun meanest, my, meanest present. Well, my Dave, my fiance, had a bird with his ex. So when you bring up birds, I'm just like disgusted. Do you guys still have it? Is it joint no, custody? No, 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 it died. No. I, oh. I stand it died. Esther, Conier. they did have joint custody. It died in Esther's <laughs> care. Esther's like <laughs> Birds are loud. I, I lost custody to a son Conyer. Really? Mm -hmm. With your ex? His name was Rasta. Oh, yeah. that's cute. And Little then when my ex free. moved to um, Texas, he named him because he was Panamanian. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's And cute. so he moved to Texas. He took Rasta and I was heartbroken because I bought Rasta after I won a $1,000 um, on the slot machine in Vegas. Ooh. And I bonded with him. Were and you I, wearing that hat? <laughs> yeah. Very, like slot machine hat. <laughs> with my cup. <laughs> But yeah, I did lose a, a parrot to, to you, an ex. Breaks my heart every day. If you had Bobby and a parrot, uh, too much. It yeah, would too be much. too much. 
Too much. It would much. Like be repeating shit Bobby said behind her back. <laughs> <laughs> Break your heart. Do you have animals here? Oh, oh yeah. You do? <laughs> Why have I never seen them? Usually this people have dogs. The dogs are everywhere, <laughs> yeah. you know? In fact, I have... So this downstairs area is um, a place for my fosters live. My foster... Because I foster dogs a lot. And we have a really big um, Dogo Argentino and in the next room oh she, i will let you know she did pee on the floor she did yeah <laughs> esther when? obviously pissed on the floor no, 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 I, think dog. A, <laughs> I, saw it's so I saw her do it so summer's coming and i have to know are you a dad bod or a six pack kind of girl well it really depends if i've drawn my six pack on or not because if i don't draw it and i do have a natural dad bod i'm a girl with a six pack who loves a dad bod yes you are <laughs> You are. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dad bod who loves a dad bod. Either way, <laughs> either way, our friends at Manscaped have the fellas' hairy bodies covered. They just launched their fourth generation performance package, which includes the Lawnmower 4.0, which we all have it and love it. And mm-hmm. you heard that right. It's the 4.0. Even if you're a fan of a bush, I still think that bush can be groomed properly. Trimmed up. And trimmed up and lined well up. Well kept. I'd, well, I'd yes. like, honestly, I'd like Todd to maybe trim a, a nice little A in there for me. <laughs> all right. It's like Scarlet Letter. Yeah, A plus. Another, the first A I got. Um. <laughs> the new performance package 4.0 includes the new Lawnmower. 4.0. This trimmer is sleek and sexy, and the fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 has 7,000 RPM motor, a new multi function on and off switch that can engage a travel lock and gives you the ability to turn the f- uh, wow, a 400K LED spotlight. I love the spotlight. <laughs> and I'm just going to leave it at that. It's dark down there. I need I need light. Um, and did we mention that this trimmer is waterproof? In the shower, in the wild, your man can shave his junk and everything in between. In the rain, when you guys are dancing naked in the rain. Come on, ladies. The Lawnmower 4.0 is the best trimmer for you and him. Gift it to yourself. Gift it to him. It works for everybody. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code trash at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code trash at manscaped.com. It's hot girl summer, and we have to get your man up to par with Manscaped. You know, if you watch this podcast, there's a good chance you need our next sponsor, BetterHelp. (laughs) Check out betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. Something preventing you from achieving your goals, Esther. Yes, anxiety. Same for me and depression and a whole list of other things, which is why BetterHelp is not just something I want. It's something that I need. Um, And um, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can connect in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. And you can connect in, what is it, like 48 hours? That's really a big deal. That means that literally within 48 hours from right now, you could be communicating with someone that could help you and really improve your life. You can send a message to your counselor anytime and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. All without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. You can do this all from your own home, which is very convenient. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. So they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed, which is very important because sometimes you don't jive. Anything you share is confidential and they have professional counselors who are specialized in grief, self-esteem, depression, anxiety, even sleep, uh, trauma, which we all have, um, anger, a, family conflicts, all of it. It's a great affordable option for people who need help, which is most likely everyone. And financial aid is available. We mm-hmm. want you guys to start living a happier life today. And as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor, betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash trash Tuesday. Yeah. So Trish, um, tell me if this is too much of a question to answer. That yeah. We live in a proximity of your ex. Oh, shit. Which is so scary. Every time you come here, I had Moses drop me off. I'm like, just go as fast as you can. I don't want him to think we're like, because people thought I was like stalking it. Like, I don't care about him, but yeah, yes. But I mean, when I say proximity, proximity, right? <laughs> like, you're right across. Yeah. But so, like, does that, like, do you hate coming here? <laughs> I don't hate it. It's just like, 
I know how he is. He still thinks I'm. He called me this year. He still thinks I'm like, obsessed with him. So it's like weird. I'm like engaged oh, and moved on. And like, this, I know. yeah, it's he so like wild. called me. and He's like, call me. It's blank. And then he had like a red heart. And I was like, oh, like I had no interest. I just like blasted him on my podcast. Like, why would I ever call you? You're the worst. So in his head, he thinks I'm still like obsessed with him. It's so weird. He tells people like, I'll just call Trish and all this will be over. I was like, oh, like I do not care. So I don't. I don't care. I just know in his head, he's probably like, oh my god, she's so obsessed with me. Like driving past my house or something. It's, <laughs> it is weird because I didn't know because he used to live. A little further down. I didn't know he was like right here. Yeah. He, th- he must have moved here like uh, after we broke up or something. But... After you did Tiger Belly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he's like right there. I had no idea. I was like, oh man. Do you ever see him? I do. Oh, do you see, are you friendly with him? I'm neutral to <laughs> okay, all my okay. neighbors. Yeah. I'm very like, I never say hi first. I'm not very neighborly that in, in that way. I'm never like, hey, how's it going? It's my name so is so-and-so. It's so much better to be like that. Yeah. 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 I always fuck that up. Esther neutral knows. is the way to go neutral. because you don't want to invite any oh. type of relationship. So it's kind of like, you know, this is me. This is my yeah. face with yeah. my hat just like this. <laughs> yeah. And then I move on. That's good. And do you do that for what? For just so you don't want to like, because you don't want to talk to them or you just don't want them to like ask for anything or like. Yeah. yeah. There's no sugar over here. Yeah. Me. It's good to be that way. I want to be that way. I'm yeah. overtly nice. But do you I do it? Up. Like just be like, don't like hit on me. Like what is it? Like, um, okay. So um, this is going to sound really fucked up. But since I moved in this neighborhood, it's a lot more like affluent. I don't feel a connection to the people mm. around me because they're older. They're, I don't know. Is um, that why you're dressing like them? <laughs> <laughs> It's like I'm my own gardener. This is my gardening attire. Um, no, I, I um, but I felt more neighborly when I was like living in the hood. Yeah, because you know, like nobody cares there. Like you could light up firecrackers. No one complains about your dog barking over here. Everything's a problem. Yeah, really. So this is why, like, I'm very like, ugh, I fucking hate my neighbors because it's like every tiny thing. You have a box outside your door that's been there for more than eight oh. hours. Mm. Please collect it. Whoa. Or if you don't get your trash bins up your driveway the same hour that it gets collected, you'll get a text from a neighbor. Wait, I'm actually that's jealous. Funny. I feel like I need that kind of like rich structure. <laughs> we, can do, we can do a home switch, please. <gasps> you what, do you have a life coach? <laughs> <laughs> well, your neighborhood's not like that. Well, you live in, an, I think, a hipper neighborhood. Do you yeah. know your neighbors? I do. I, but I, my poor neighbor that was too nice to me She's like a high level agent at ICM. And every time there's like something wrong in the neighborhood, I'm like, is everything okay? Like when there's an earthquake, I text her. And she's so nice to me. And I just feel so bad. I've like totally abused the relationship. <laughs> are you friends with her or you just text her when there's a problem? <laughs> just when there's a problem. Trauma bonding, yeah. <laughs> you can get the Ring app. It'll tell you when like things happen. Do you have that? Like where it'll tell you like things mm-hmm. in your neighborhood. Do, yeah. yeah. But they like, they'll be like, there's a helicopter. Does anyone know what happened? It's like the same thing. And I'm always like, yeah. what? It's like, so, oh, a suspicious that. person. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, Everyone's the neighborhood fucking, I'm, I'm the to. suspicious person I know, here. They report you. Yeah. I don't want it's always there's so many dumpster fires. I'm like, I, I'm so flattered. Have you noticed? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You guys should do a swap. All you guys should swap with each other's boyfriends, like a wife swap. You remember that show where you would like swap? That'd be such a good I don't Dave, know if do vlogs. No, because Dave would fall in love with Kawhi and he'd <laughs> yeah. never leave. Yeah. And Bobby would be banging to get away from Dave him. would be able to sleep in, right? Yeah. Um, what else would he? What perks? But then you know what? I think that there are perks about you, too, that you might be able to offer Bobby. Uh, what? <laughs> nice real um, tits. Uh, no, <laughs> no I think that nice. you know how you He's like to be. to me at all. You like to be a separate, a separate room yes. in a way. He would love that. We would just sit silently in <laughs> other yes. rooms. And we'd actually be very happily married. How would you get your popcorn, though? I can't imagine Bobby making popcorn and bringing it. Would That's the that? easiest thing to make. If all he had to do was do popcorn, he I would choose like Esther over me. not the way Esther wants it, though. Well, yeah, it's, I, it has to be made on the stove. With oh. Like, give me pop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is oh, he no, acts of service, Bobby Lee? Uh, Bobby? Um, towards me? Yeah. Or his, he's acts of service. I think his love uh-huh. language is acts of service. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he would go and do stuff, make popcorn. And stuff. Oh, no, that's, he would want acts of service from me. Well, do you think that's from oh. Asian mother? Oh. No, yeah. I think that's because of he had an Asian mother that did I don't fucking know. I don't oh. know who, you know, love his mom, but I don't think that's who he raised, who was, yeah, who yeah, raised yeah. him because she's a lovely lady and I just, I refuse to believe like. <laughs> that she's in charge. Of she's in happened. charge because <laughs> something got wrong. Something happened there. If you guys got my boyfriend, you, you're, I mean, your guys would be so upset with what the demands that you would have <laughs> after having my sweet Todd. Todd wow. is, Todd is a, he, is a I have guy. just like an angel. Oh, yeah. really? He like just he... does. He's just, he is my Asian mother. Like, he does everything <laughs> for me. He's such a sweet, sweet, 
sweet man. That's so cool. So you guys are, are you guys like opposites in that sense? Are you more like because you're like the artist, the creative, the like yeah. star? And what does he do? Anything creatively? He's an editor, but he's very talented. He's got a very good eye, and he's right. like get, he's become very successful over the pandemic. And he, but he knows like he is totally okay with like sitting back, letting me do my mm. thing. But he can help me with it. like it's just. It's really perfect. I just can't even believe it. It's so weird. I want to ask you guys something. Um, what are your thoughts on that kid, um, Ollie London? Um, the kid who... So he's a he's a white guy. I'm not sure if he's a YouTuber. I don't know what he does. I don't know him. But he's an influencer, right? But he... I think he paid about $150,000 in like cosmetic surgery. And now he claims to be Korean. Oh, <laughs> what? I'm jealous he did what? it before me. I mean... So he's tr- he's transracial, like what oh, Rachel wow. Dolezal claims to be. But he got actual surgery. So yeah, see, that's him <laughs> to now. To look like the culture. He looks like Kesha. He's like <laughs> yeah, he looks like a, whiter than ever. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> he looks so white. What are the rules with this? Are you is this allowed? I don't know. I honestly don't know because have you watched a Rachel Dolezal documentary? Yeah, I just yeah. went back for her, her kids were like, please, mom, stop. The pronouns are there, but he's using core and Ian with a slash in between oh. as if it's a separate type of like transracial pronoun. Oh, yeah. So he's being his own thing. Wait, can you be transracial? Is that a real thing? Well, he's claiming, you know, like the Ro- the Rachel Dolezals claim that. Like there's a there's a white guy in Florida who also claims to be Filipino. Um, but oh. his excuse was he was raised by them and it was such a it, that's a community he was surrounded by, so it makes sense. Him, on the other hand, just has a fascination and an obsession for BTS. Mm. Oh, okay. okay go I ahead, feel George. like that's just my culture. That's my home country. That's exactly how I look now. <laughs> um, oh. And I also identify oh. as Jimmy, and that's my Korean name. But uh, not only that, I just I know it's a little bit confusing for some people. Nobody's ever come out as Jimin or Korean, but um, this is something that you guys know if you follow my journey for the last eight years. I've really struggled with identity issues, with who I am. Mm. I have a probably unpopular opinion. I, I probably f- agree with you on the unpopular. Opinion. I, I feel like I do too. Yeah. I would to say that you're fine with it. I like. I think you. It, but I'm also not. It's not my place to say it's okay because I'm not Korean. But I also am like. Can we just? It's not. It's not bad, right? It's not evil or hateful. I just feel like it. Just. I just honestly feel like it's not my business yeah. to tell someone what they can like be or want to be. And it's like if he's willing to do all this stuff, I think maybe it's offensive to like. I, I just don't. I just don't. I don't we, care. I don't mean it in like a shitty way, but it's like what, it's just so. We not need my to call what a Korean think? in I, Korea. Well, I feel like I kind of. It's so interesting because I feel like I'm kind of. I kind of get the same hate as this, but but it's interesting. So like I'm currently in conversion classes, so like you can convert to being a religion. So it's kind of like the same thing. Mm-hmm. Although I get hate for that. Like it's totally normal, and like I'm going through a rabbi and stuff like that to convert, and then I'll be Jewish, mm-hmm. and then it's totally cool. People are they, people get so mad at me whenever I do try and like speak Hebrew or if I wear like a high or like start yeah. dating. People get pissed. Like they get so pissed. Like just because you're dating, because I've always dated Jewish men. I just and because I'm uh, similar to that. Like I just like the culture yeah. and I don't have culture, so like I like it. And then I don't know. I I don't know. But people find it offensive. They find everything offensive. I don't know. Yeah, that, I just feel like that is true. Everyone's like finding everything offensive yeah. anyway. And it's like kind of not. I mean, he is out there like showing this as so like wanting it to be other people's business, I guess. Yeah. Well, Kyla, you're Asian. Where are you at? I can't speak for the Korean people, but when I how I felt about the white guy in Florida who was Filipino, um, I I'm more like, you know, welcome. Yeah, yeah. it was more like. I, I, I guess, but also <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I don't know actually where I stand on this. I, I'm really, but here's where, th- this is why I, uh, there's a part of me that sort of feels for him. Mm. Um, because when I was in high school, I was a straight up chola. You know, I had such an identity crisis because of coming from a different country and then like kind of sort of re- being rejected by the Filipinos that were already here because I was a fob, like fresh off the boat. But Latinos, they took me in like their own. They're like, oh, we don't mm-hmm. care. You know, you look ish, you know, <laughs> yeah. ish. Yeah, come to our quinceañera. It's like that was, it was full acceptance. And I really, really like leaned into that. Like I speak Spanish, you know, I have, I, I know every single Spanish musician or Mexican, you know, like it's, the, I'm a complete package. I'm yeah. a complete like Latinx package. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> but I would never Filipina reject the fact that <laughs> you're I'm Filipino, Fili- yeah. like yeah, my mom is Filipina, but yeah. I think I think 
Jewish is a is an interesting one. Like going back to what you were saying. Sorry, did I cut you off? No, 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 you didn't. Oh, do we do that? Apologize when we cut off. I owe you guys a lot of apologies. Oh you shit! You better get wow, guys. Notes. Wow. Um, the Jewish thing is really tricky because I dealt with this growing up because I'm half. So my dad is completely Jewish. My mom is not at all. She's Finnish and like Christian or whatever. And I always felt like the Jewish people would say, well, you're not really Jewish. Your mom wasn't Jewish. But then the regular, the non-Jewish people would say, well, you're Jewish. Like, you're not Christian. You're Jewish. And so I always mm -hmm. felt like no one accepted me. And then I like, as like, when I became an adult, I just like sort of decided I'm if I'm Jew, I'm Jewish, like, leave me alone. Like I, I'm, it, it shows up on my 23 and me, which is also weird. It's like, you can convert, but also <laughs> it's on 23 and me. Like, what is, who's more Jewish, me or you? Like, I don't right, know. Right. I'm just surprised. you are. Because, yeah, because I like converted. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Because the mom has to be Jewish. Like, if you want to enroll your kid in like Hebrew school, like the mom has to be Jewish. The one like, we know someone like enrolling their kid in Hebrew school and the mom has to be Jewish. So that's why I'm like, I'm converting. So I can yeah. be Jewish. It's Because it is so, I've learned that too. Like, the mom has to be the Jewish to consider yourself Jew. I don't know. Yeah, I'm my sorry. dad's side's my Jewish side too. So it's not. Oh, I'm, really? On my like 23 and me, I'm like 20% Ashkenazi. But we were brought up Quaker. All, our whole neighborhood was Jewish we were oh. not everyone was like when we had our big 13th birthday party they're like nice try not about mitzvah oh. <laughs> my um, gut my gut on this is that it feels wrong but yeah. he's not what okay here's wrong? the thing Him. if he was pretending he was born huh. like if he was pretending he was born Korean and trying to just like play it off I think that would be like because that's what Rachel Dolezal did right she was she was like getting tan she was getting her hair uh permed and doing all this yeah. stuff and she never said I was like raised I was I was born white or whatever mm -hmm. and I think that was like the big insult to people right mm -hmm. less than her being like I identify as black which I think people still have a problem with well but. to take on like you're not just taking on a look. You're mm -hmm. taking on a full history of people that are a minority. Mm -hmm. So you do have to consider that, like, what a privilege now you, as a white man, to be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it's fun for me to play dress up in somebody else's skin is a, sort of my first instinct in all of this, right. where it's like, dude, Koreans, ex you know, Korean Americans and stuff like that, it's, you're still a minority. You don't know what that feels like growing up feeling different. Mm -hmm. Not in LA, I mean. But in like, let's say you're um, my friend Nathan. He was a Korean kid growing up in the cornfields of Ohio. He had a rough go. You know what I mean? So for I, I, I'm i curious to see what he feels about a guy like this who is like, he might feel like maybe this is a guy in costume of his, dif in co not taking into consideration the difficulty that comes with being like, a young Korean American or, you know, I can see both sides. Like, and again, I know I'm just like, I'm not Korean, but I do see part of like how Trisha like loves Jewish people. I'm like, hell yeah. Like, and she wants to be Jewish. Like, I think why I don't have a problem with that, even though some people would say I'm not Jewish. I identify as Jewish. I'm half Jewish. Yeah. I think it's cool when people like this culture and want to be involved mm. in it. Yeah. Every guy I've dated has always said that, but then like, recently i've gotten under criticism of people saying it's fetishizing if you like a certain like but that's religion. just like the internet Not, right? yours doesn't read that way this reads that way like feti yeah also there the the jewish religion has a whole like ceremony they do they have a whole program right. set up to, to help welcome you, you in. yeah yeah, yeah but, i have a friend yeah. who's also who's interested in converting Really? Yeah, one of my best friends. Oh, I have a rabbi yeah. who's really good because I'm kind of like on the accelerated course because we're getting yeah. married so soon. So I'm kind of like on the speed Is track. Is it hard? Yeah. I mean, I, ju I literally just started a couple weeks ago, but there's a lot. Like you have to like study everything. Like you have to like no, they, and they're very philosophical. The one I'm going to is very like it's more than just like the like the Judaism religion, all that stuff like that, like the religion to go with it, and the, like the dinner is and the religion. Also, there's like more to it. There's like ph ph philosophy behind it and all that stuff like that. So it's like a lot. It's like you're reading that. Plus, you have to learn because I'm having about mitzvah. So yeah, you have to read. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can so we come awesome. to that? Yeah, you guys should come. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. <laughs> that's be, hard work, dude. Yeah, it's a lot. Well, I like that's why I've been practicing. Like, like on the way here, we were practicing. Like I literally had my 
Hebrew notebook. I was like practicing my little like Hebrew for the because it's like the prayers are not only just the prayers, but it's also like the con- the tones, you know, it's like it's so much. So, yeah, you guys should come. Yeah, <laughs> Tiffany Haddish so recently had a bat mitzvah. Is she, did she yeah. convert? Is she she, she yes. converted. Yeah, she was, I think some of her, she was adopted by, she was raised at she, Her some mentor, point. I think. Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Some, some mentored or raised by a Jewish family yeah. at some point, mm-hmm. and she really identified similar to you, like identify with the culture. Deeply. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah. it is so much deeper. Now that I'm like, I look again, I'm only a few weeks into it, but it is, it, there is a lot of, like philosophy behind it and stuff and it's like a lot more than even I was raised Catholic so it's a lot more than even like Christianity and stuff it's really Same. It's, it's really it's really yeah did you get confirmed all of that yeah com- mm. communion confirmation mm-hmm. like that's cool that you guys time. are gonna get both that you're gonna do both you're yeah gonna have like <laughs> a double yeah, yeah that's I'm really excited well in Israel they're a lot more like uh, like actually kind of lenient. They could they they offered us like a rabbi that's not a real rabbi to look like a Jewish wedding, but I'm like, no, I want the real yeah. one, you know? I want the whole thing. So yeah, I don't know. It's really interesting. But I know people have given me criticism about like only dating Jewish guys and being like, and, like what? but I'm sure- Everybody yeah. does that. But people that are, they're just, their goal is to criticize. So it doesn't really matter what you say. They're going to like come up with like yeah. a thing. Yeah, because You're there is like date preference. whoever you want. I like Jewish guys. Right. Like, is your no. fiance Jewish? Yeah. Oh, okay. Are you guys having a Jewish ceremony? He's very Jewish. Oh, really? Like he's- he and Moses look alike. Oh, I love it. <laughs> they, they've got the Jew look. Down. I love they've that look. they got the hair. So here's the deal. I'm going to talk real with you guys. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when we first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month, We're like, what's the catch? But after speaking with them and using their service, it all makes sense because there isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. By cutting out retail stores, there's no crazy overhead costs that get passed down to you in the form of mystery fees. Instead, Mint just passes on the sweet savings directly to you. For people looking for extra savings, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited, I said that right, unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. This is amazing. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. Switch to the Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. <laughs> well, I just love when we have sponsors that actually save our listeners money mm-hmm. and it like makes sense, you know? And this is that's what this product is. George told us he's been using this for like a year two years. or two now. Two years. And you actually save a bunch of money. Oh, so much. Yeah. This is crazy. I didn't even know about it. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash Tuesday. That's mintmobile.com slash Tuesday. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Tuesday. My dad's going to be so happy. Hell yeah. <laughs> get off that family plan. Also, we're so psyched because one of our favorite sponsors, you know it's my favorite sponsor, Liquid Death finally gave us a promo code so you guys can go to liquiddeath.com slash trash to get a free set of koozies with your first order of any case of water or, you know, always grab some at Whole Foods or 7-Eleven, but go to liquiddeath.com slash trash and get a free set of koozies. We love liquid death i'm not gonna lie (laughs) nobody thinks you're lying (laughs) this is a more believable thing i've ever seen in my life (laughs) drinking fresh mountain water out of a can is my lifestyle okay it really does explain you so well (laughs) (laughs) he and so he and i are both like we identify he's fully jewish he was raised jewish like had a bar mitzvah but we're very not into the religion of it oh, all, really at all like and my dad was neither like i didn't go to a hebrew school he didn't want my mom to convert we're oh. very much like into the culture and like you know eat our matzo ball soup but we do not fuck with the religion at all do you yeah. like the filter fish i don't i like oh, the filter no. fish a lot like no. oh am i the most jewish one in the room yeah <laughs> Actually, so yes. Not surprising. I know. I mean, look. <laughs> now, six percent Ashkenazi. I think my twenty-three and me says. Are you says. serious? Actually, what, I think really? it's one percent. 
It's 1%. Oh, my God. But I'll send it to you guys. Screenshot it. That's <laughs> everything. So everyone's a little Jewish, literally, except for me. I've done mine so many times, and I have, like, none in me. It's so You sad. have zero? Zero. Oh, none. I'm P.E. Trish. Yeah. <laughs> twice, a, <laughs> no, I twice a day you have some in you. I, <laughs> I love that. That's true. <laughs> no. Keep putting it in me. <laughs> was Moses raised in – he grew up in Israel? He grew up in Israel, and he was, like, raised – he had a bum its fun stuff, but he's not religious. Oh, he's not. Mm-hmm. Did he then – did he have to do the whole Israeli army thing? Yeah. He did? Yeah, he so did Eli, army, right? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they both did. Yeah, you're like – it's like a thing you just do. Like you just have to – you have to, but also people just like want you. I'm like, can people say no? He's like, yeah, but you're just so like – you're just – that's what you do. If you don't go, then they like look down upon you. So, In yeah. Korea too. Really? Yeah, you have to. So even if you're a celebrity, let's say like you're a member of BTS, I, I think it's commuted, so it's shortened, but you do have to still serve. Elvis did it. He did? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. Elvis In got Korea? Drafted. No. <laughs> and I was like, well, was it Korea? I was looking then? back, I was like, maybe he looks sort of Korean. <laughs> I was like, maybe. No, yeah, he went to Germany. That's where he met uh, Priscilla. Priscilla. She was 14. So yeah. her dad was like a general. Uh, that's so crazy because I love Elvis and now it makes me really sad to know that he was like a groomer. Well, looking like, back on all of that, you're like, ew. Yeah. What was the. Jerry Lee Lewis yeah. with yes. his 14 year old cousin. Why did we? I grew up watching that movie in a really romantic like <laughs> lens. Too. Was it Dennis? Quaid? That could be me one day. Yes. Dennis Quaid, yeah. Dennis Quaid, yeah. Nona Ryder. Did and I it was tell you like, this when I met Dennis Quaid? You with met the Dennis. band Train. Did I ever tell you this? Yeah, I love. Remember the, the band Train? train? Yeah, you know what Trips they look like. Jupiter, duh. My yeah. friend was like randomly like doing their podcast at a hotel in New York. Yeah, and he, and. This other guy was like, come, like, let's go hang out with Train. I thought he meant let's go on the train. Like, I didn't even understand. And we walked into this hotel bar and Train was there. And I was like, yeah. Train? The whole band? Yeah. And you Wait, know is it the whole band? Pat? Is there one guy named Train? Like, yeah. One guy. No, yeah. there's a whole band, but the oh. guy Pat is like the yeah. lead singer. And then we were like hanging out with them in the bar. And then Dennis Quaid came over and they were talking about how they love to jam. And we went up to Train's room mm-hmm. and Dennis Quaid was like, shirtless playing acoustic guitar <laughs> gin and juice we we're playing all these different songs we we're all singing it was cra- i saw him at the comedy store and he has- I was like do you remember when we were at, when we like sang with train he was like yes and he oh. always randomly meets the most famous poets <laughs> like just it's the, her stories always have a combination of never just like one famous person the oddest combination right. of people in a room train but i met train played. again i was like train we meet again <laughs> is that how you is that how you call what you call yeah, I go, You're train like, we train. meet again <laughs> Because at the very end of the hang with Dennis Quaid, when I was saying goodbye, they were, everything had been so respectful and cool. And it was when I was doing that show Girl Code, so I had to get up early. I was like, oh, I'm going to go shoot this thing. And right before I left, one, uh, the guy goes, um, wait, before you go, you should bang our roadie. And I like couldn't believe he <laughs> fucked up this perfect night where nothing was sexual or anything. Yeah. And I threw my purse and I was like, train, like, fuck you. <laughs> and I left. And then I was so pissed at train. And then I saw them a year later at a at a music festival that I was doing comedy at and we were they had like a shitty cafeteria for the comedians but we couldn't find it so they finally let us go into like one of the nice cafeterias and Train was there and I went Train we meet again and I threw my bag down and he was like I'm sorry I'm sorry (laughs) and we took like a selfie so now we're cool we follow each other so he like always remembers meeting you yeah that's kind of cool I made a scene when he did that (laughs) wait Train told you to bang a yes oh but he apologized on Train (laughs) I would never expect that from him. Yeah, but did, isn't Dennis Quaid like dating like a twenty year old? Yeah, she's pretty. Th- oh no, I think she's old enough. T- I saw her. She's at a thirty. Club. Yeah, she's no, old. he was dating someone who was thirty for like five years. Like mm. moved in with her, and then he. Oh yeah, this girl. He he broke up with her after eight years, and then this girl he started dating for six months, and they got engaged after six months. That's oh, so that's sad so for the other girl. Yeah, that was awful. I was like, that's so sad. I always remember how Simon Cowell's long term girlfriend. How he would said he would never have kids, and then he got uh, the next uh, girl. Wait, pregnant she, right didn't she away. work on E or something? She was yeah, so yes. extra, I think, right? extra. Yeah. yeah. I always feel that's such a bummer. Guys. But you never know what's going on. She probably like you, did she want to be married to Simon Cowell? Maybe she didn't really. want I to feel be. like she. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Somebody once told me something really heart wrenching when I was younger and in my twenties, and it Uh-oh. stuck with me. And it said. Men don't choose the right partner; they choose the right time. Yes, yeah. I've heard. I feel like I've heard that on Sex in the City. Perhaps <laughs> <laughs> I heard it in my ancient. Was it, was it when I was studying Hebrew, or was it? <laughs> that Sex in the City scarred school. me. By yeah. <laughs> that show scarred me. I feel like the lesson of that show is like, get a man, or you're old. It's like it just yeah. was not good. Or you're the slut that gets cancer. You're like, oh my god. I know. Oh, at the I beach house, it. and then she <laughs> chose yeah. to not. She was like, I want to be alone. <laughs> Okay, like, oh I have God. a question. I've been following. I, I've watched all your stuff always. I've been. <laughs> I've been up to date. Um, 
with all the like drama. What drama? I know. I know like behind the scenes, what's happening with you and Hila? Because she's your sister in law, right? Yeah. And you, you're like kind of seem to be in like this public fight with Ethan. But yeah. is are behind the scenes like is everything okay? Are you not worried long term? Because like you, you know, know, you guys are gonna be your family. Yeah. It really, yeah, it's such a messy thing. I should note that I was, like, going to come on here even before Frenemies ended because we had this booked, like, before and then Frenemies ended and I was like, oh, and hopefully you guys don't get hate for having me on because I did one interview since post Frenemies and you got so much hate. They're like, we hate her. So there's a big uh, hate, hate campaign right now. Don't worry about it. We don't, we don't okay, believe we're, in that. Okay. Okay. We don't care. Okay. <laughs> okay. In her so, locus of control. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, I, I've always been fine with her. Actually, she's always been really nice. I have no issues with Ela. It's, like, literally was between me and Ethan, but Ethan, like, drags, like, a lot of people. And obviously it's his wife, so obviously. Yeah. But but like personally, like you know, we haven't talked or anything. But like I'm totally, like, we've never had an issue. I think it's more because I'm like Ethan and I. I'm like totally over it now. I mean, I don't know. But have you guys talked? No, we're like really. Yeah. Did you no. guys during that time that things were going down like consider like uh, you know how they have those work therapists? Oh, like yeah. a couples therapist, but for <laughs> for for the workplace yeah. and stuff. Oh, wow. I've had to do that. I would be so, <laughs> really. With who? Donut. Um, <laughs> the dog looks day better. Um, no, I was on a show where uh, I was co-starring with my best friend at the time. And, like, it was really a lot, a lot. Mm. Like, we were doing so much. And so we, like, saw a therapist for a few sessions and it really helped us. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think that End the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Peacefully. Yeah. No, the network ended the show. But that is a really tricky thing and a really yeah. big gamble to – um, work with family yeah. or work with really like close friends but and also the show was called Frenemy so you knew there was like the contention of right? course so, yeah. yeah and that's what everyone was saying too they're like well that is the show and it's mm -hmm. like I always thought that was the show too you know but then you know it's fine it is what it is but like yeah I always thought that too I feel like if it was like a reality show like the drama helps it mm -hmm. yeah but I think there was just like a a point of just not it's not working anymore yeah. and so yeah. they're very like no drama and I'm very drama unintentionally but um like I, I, I understand yeah. your your point of view and your side of I, I thank you yeah I understand what happened from what I from what I understand whatever but I'm yeah. I'm curious do your do Moses and Hila like are they like back channeling like while well, you and Ethan are fighting are they like because they're brother and sister like everything's okay like yeah you know I know I guess that was my issue uh because Ethan said like Hila's family is so mad at her we talked to his mom this morning and she goes I love Trish like tell her I love her and like his brother's coming out to stay with us like we're all cool like the family um again they like him and Hila probably talk and stuff like that but he doesn't like tell me as much or whatever but Ethan's like dragged his mom into it and all this stuff like that so it's becoming more of a family issue than it had to be in my opinion because it really was like I had this issue with Ethan and I get okay it also involves Hila because that's your wife but then like involving like family in Israel and this you know because they're all like we're cool we thought it was done as of this morning like we thought everything you know whatever so um yeah I don't know I I don't I haven't heard from either, yeah like either of them like hopefully I mean we have a wedding and so hopefully and we did family activities before so hopefully yeah and like you're you you and Moses want to start a family and they yeah. obviously have kids it's like yeah you guys are going to be a family regardless yeah so and, right there's and gonna think, be babies involved yeah I think I feel like time is so fresh and stuff but yeah. he's so like right now it's just like a lot of like whatever well, so I'm trying it's, to it's it's not different from any other family drama right like these things happen in our own families yours is just heightened because it's in the public eye right. and so it's like that's when it gets a little and bit and she made a lot of videos <laughs> right <laughs> which I deleted I'm like you, you know did? yeah I deleted all of them because I'm really I really am yeah, like okay let me just disengage and not do this because like going back and forth like obviously we just don't see eye to eye so it's just like a lot yeah so I just kind of pulled the plug on that but um but like when you were saying like we started the show and it's hard to work with family like I think at the time me and Moses were like just started officially dating for like a month so mm -hmm. I think in his head like everyone else is like oh this is like not gonna last but everyone said like even when me and Moses dating they like Ethan or they told Moses like don't date Trisha it's gonna end in disaster so I don't know why he decided to start a show with me <laughs> if he thought our relationship would end in a disaster but it is me, you guys are unfortunately magic together me and Ethan I I know it's really sad it's really sad I, I I'm very sad my about mom it. She doesn't watch anything. She didn't even watch my own podcast. <laughs> she watches Frenemies. Oh. You know? Yeah. Well, they probably don't she, talk about her on yesterday, there. Yesterday, darling, you have Trisha tomorrow. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, and I'm like, oh my god, ma, watch my <laughs> shit. Subscribe to mine. <laughs> you too. You're like, I want all these podcasts. Does your mom talk like that? Does she have an accent? Yeah, she's I a really thick accent. Love accents. I love accents. That's so cool. She's well, in love with you. Oh, is she here? Is she here in no, LA? No, she's not. Oh, you should. Bring she her should be upstairs cleaning, but she's, <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's that'd be so fun. You should but have your mom on. <laughs> I don't want to. I mean, yeah, I don't want to like make you feel bad about it because I think like that it just happens. But do you feel like? Because I, I have seen you've, you guys have quit before. Do you feel like this is this quit is going to stick or is there any chance? You know, for me, I, I, I did. I've quit. I quit the show like three times and then we brought Dr. Drew <laughs> yeah. back and it was fine. So for me, in my head, when I say I quit something, like, and this is a, such a, it's it's a toxic pattern, so I'm not saying it's okay, but every time I quit or if I just, you know, I don't know what this anymore to Moses, but I'd always be like, I want to break up with you. And then he just like, in an hour, I'm like totally fine. I do that too. Right. Way. Okay, so <laughs> you get it. So that's how I was. I was pissed after our argument, but then literally an hour later, he's like, hey, we paid $5,000 for this rage room tomorrow. Do you want to do it? I'm like, obviously, yes. So I was like down to film the next day. It mm-hmm. was going to be fine and then he texted me I was like I don't the crew is really mad at you right and, and that made you feel like alienated yeah so then I was like oh well then I'm just like quitting and I did my I quit video and then it turned into a snowball into his thing because then he did a video about do you like, feel as though when you put a video out like that that you can't you now you have to double down like do you ever feel oh, that way no. where you're like you impulsively feel so rageful yeah and then even though you're not necessarily feeling like you want like follow through with the quitting but now it's out there so you have to double down on that decision yeah I was doing that like tenfold <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was doubling down doubling down doubling, you know what I mean and then there is a point of like almost like no return right like I, I felt in my opinion that I was being like respectful like you know because I there was a time when I like came for Eli when she wasn't even involved that was six months ago and we like I thought we moved past it, and then he threw it in my face again this past time and it was like so ugly and so awful and it was just all on my end on his side so this time I was like you know I was I didn't name call which is like a huge improvement for me usually I like when I'm in a fight I like name call I want to like I'm the meanest so I thought this time I like handled myself well but for some reason this was like the biggest one that everyone's hanging on to and like we hate Trisha now so it's, it's well, I could tell that yeah. the way you handled the fight that that they aired on the show it's like you clearly were trying like a new coping mechanism of just like, I'm going to like, you were like, let's end it. Like you're powering down, like, let me walk away from the situation, yeah. which like is the kind of the right move, right? I'm I'm different. I come from a very, very dysfunctional family. So it's like, let's lay it all out and let's work through it. Because ultimately I know that we love each other. That's an mm. undeniable fact. We're just not working through the other stuff that is muddying up the water so like my thing is to not ever run away which is maybe a very unhealthy pattern for me because I stick around in possibly like make bad relationships for way long (laughs) (laughs) but I and in therapy I talk about is like why is my threshold so high like why do I want to always make it work yeah like I just I'm like come on we got this we can do this and and I think that ultimately I do that if I if I feel like there is this like foundation of like love there. Yeah. And um, I don't know if that, um, you know, it speaks to you guys, but like, and, and again, I don't know you and Ethan in that way. Yeah. But when I look at you guys together and that dynamic, like there is that like, like tangible love. Like yeah. I see it, you yeah. know? Yeah, and I think that's why also too it was like so explosive because it's always the people around me that like get at the worst. Like I'm never like I don't just go off on people I don't know, you know. Yeah. It's like I keep that in, but I feel like it is the people closest to me. Like me and Moses had a really big one last year that like that's when I was like, okay, I really do need to get on medication because I have like because I do have something wrong with me. I'm, I'm borderline and I'm schizophrenia, schizophrenic, and so I just got on medication for that, and like I feel like it's helped a lot. But the problem is, is I was got put on the medication at the end of May, and this was June eighth. So I think like during the transition time, like it takes like four to six weeks. For medication turn, I probably like shouldn't have been on the the podcast because I think it was just like I felt like I like you were saying I felt like I was trying to disengage because that's what they teach you in, like yeah. uh, in Walk borderline yeah. yeah they're like and same thing with Moses because it's like for me I just get angrier and angrier yeah. which is like not good like, but when I sleep on something I'm like oh no what did I do you know I felt so that's that's where the doubling down then came in but yeah I I feel like I should have been. I don't know. I feel like it's. I feel like it's just too far gone. Like you never know. I don't, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. that like really, you have no control over what other people think of you yeah. or feel about yeah. you, especially in this like public eye that you're in. Mm-hmm. So it's really like just being true to yourself, learning your own lessons, being your best self, and like 
not being mad at yourself for things you did and just like having an open heart. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's where I'm at too because I would spiral before. And I think a lot of it is I'm codependent on Moses and I have Moses. I think if I didn't, if I was like single, I'd be like spiraling yeah. so much because that's what I used to do all the time. So the internet knows me as being like crazy or whatever. But I feel like now it's like, or even being here, you know, just mm-hmm. being around like people outside of the internet because his fans are so hardcore and yeah. they're like, F you and all this like crazy stuff. So it's like, oh my God. But then like being here and you're like, we don't care what, you know, like yeah. the real, like other people, like it is, it's, it's really between me and Ethan. And then yeah. obviously people in front of me's fans are upset or whatever, but I don't know. When you get in the real world, you're like, okay, it's not as serious as yeah. it feels. And yeah, I can't I can't change what I did. I did an apology. He didn't accept it. And that's totally fine. But yeah. it's like, there's nothing more I can do. I can't go back in time. Mm-hmm. That's almost him better and, though, because yeah. you did it for yourself. And it yeah. wasn't like, I really have been trying in my life to not do things for, to get an outcome from something, mm-hmm. you know, and just to really do it like from me outward. And then whatever happens, happens. That's you know? so, yeah, I, but that, you know what? I said that in my apology too. Cause I was like, you know, maybe this is kind of selfish that I want to do this for me because I feel really bad about it. And the people were like, wow, the apology wasn't even for Ethan. Like you're just doing it for selfish reasons. And I was like, but in a way like that is what I had to take yeah. from it because he didn't want to accept it. And again, it's fine, but it's like, I had to release it for me cause I felt so much guilt yeah. for how I handled like, it. Like no matter what you do, you're always, you're, you're at that level where there's always going to be people who are upset about what you did. And you know what? Like, the commenters are like a half a percent of the actual people who are watching. And I think Halila like told mom. me. my mom. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. My that. mom, while she's really upset about the breakup, <laughs> she's like, I love both of them. Aww. She's not siding yeah. with anyone. I love that. And those are the true stands, yeah. I think. Yeah. It's like the people who are just watching quietly. Like you said, like most people, most people are watching quietly. They buy a couple tickets to the live show. They buy mm-hmm. their merch and they never... Vo- they never voice their mm. opinion and I feel like that's that is we have to remember that's the majority of who we're like here to entertain and they're also yeah. you have no clue like so many times like if I've like gotten triggered by a comment that someone made if I go back at them they're like oh my god I'm so sorry <laughs> I'm a big fan it's like so I'm really trying to like release my judgment even on people that are like you're a fat whore like I'm just like <laughs> I don't know what your day is but it's like because because if I'm judging them I'm pissed like it's my now I'm attaching and I'm like letting them have my energy and the amount yeah. of times Annie and I have been called referred Refrigerator bodies. <laughs> and it like is right in a weird way. I was like, oh. wait, what's a refrigerator yeah. body? Like, it's like a square, <laughs> just... a tri, a rectangle. Oh my like, god. Oh. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. No matter what people always hate, because yeah. you guys are like model as beautiful, like skinny, and I'm just like, dang. Like, and, and then they get me. They call me like little Porky Pig and stuff like that. So they're just not happy. Refrigerator, Porky, whatever. Um, I mean, what are your thoughts? Like on... Miss Piggy, bitch. At least, like I'm hot. I, I love yeah. Miss Piggy. Yeah, I take that yeah. as a compliment all day um, long. What are your thoughts on? I know that people are tying it to the pizza curse, but is there really <laughs> something to having pizza and him I... dressing as Uncle well, Buster? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What, did you guys have pizza both times yeah. that you okay so we're we're obviously friends but I think we're, our biggest disagreement between the three of us was, was right after it was pizza Domino's, no. whether we like Domino's or Papa John's uh, no. oh here we like Domino's yeah, <laughs> you, isn't Domino's that true stand. I think there's something to the pizza curse yeah. oh that's so weird well that's so weird because I've been eating Domino's like my entire life like I eat it like three times a week so I don't know maybe it's like eating it with people or something but I've always eaten Domino's maybe you don't have all of these personality disorders you just said and maybe you just it's Domino's <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I need to eat a Trish, car. can I ask you about um, schizophrenia? Yeah. Um, what are um, I want to, ask to what Martin degree? <laughs> to what degree do you do you have like auditory hallucinations? Both. Is that f- I have auditory and visual. Yeah. Do you have um, um smell? Mm-mm. No. And do they come in like when you're off the meds? Um, is it something that's like chronic that you get every day, or do you have um bigger um what do you call it like episodes? It was getting to be every day, which is why I like sought help because I thought I got d- diagnosed with borderline in 2019. I was in like three mental hospitals that year. So I was like, oh, I'm just borderline. That's it. Like I mm-hmm. didn't think there was anything more. And then um, I started like develop, like I started hearing things in my head. Like it was started off like bells and whistles and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I actually like applied for this like reality show. It was like right before quarantine hit and we were taking out this thing. I was like, do you see like shapes that aren't like, you know, do you see like animals that don't, aren't there? So I would always see like animals. I would see shapes. I would see all this stuff like that that were like not there. And I was thinking like, and I was on, I was doing a lot of Xanax. So I thought at the time it was like a Xanax mm-hmm. thing. So my doctor's like, no, just get off Xanax. Like, you know, my therapist was like, get off Xanax. You're fine. You're not schizophrenic, all this stuff like that. But um, when it started to be voices and it was like voices with people that were next to me, like my sister, I'd be like, oh, no, that's that's not it. And she goes, what are you? I didn't say anything, you know, so I was like having conversations, really? hearing her have the conversations. Mm. Yeah. And so I they used to be really dark voices. And um, 
then the darkness kind of went away. It was really like, and people would say, well, what did Ethan actually was like, oh, those are intrusive thoughts. But they were more than like intrusive thoughts. Yeah. It was like literally someone telling there's me. There's a very big line between intrusive thoughts and, and actually like there's a person yeah, yeah to some, me there was a person like next to me you know i would hear like family members next to me being like oh you know if you just like it, there's a window like it, I, I didn't go upstairs for our house for the first month like you know there's a window you should just jump out of mm. it and then like you know you'll see your grandma you'll see all this thing like it was very like comforting voices and i never was suicidal i never heard mm-hmm. voices when i was a kid i did and i was taken for um diagnosis and it wasn't schizophrenia they gave me bipolar medication i was really young it was like i was on lithium a couple times Mm -hmm. um um but yeah and it it was weird they kind of subsided i don't know if it's because like i did i was doing a bunch of drugs for most of my life here in hollywood i don't know what it was but they would subside and then i don't know like last year it started to get bad and then this year got really bad and then they went from like dark voices when i started going there's one thing called cognitive group therapy i've been doing and it's like other I won't, I won't get too much into it, but other other than, like, they started, to, like, helping me, and then I was starting to hear, like, more positive voices, but it was more mm-hmm. just, like, every day. Like, I thought Moses would be talking to me, and he wasn't, you know, but mm-hmm. he'd be sitting right there. And then the visual stuff, I see a lot, and that's more daytime, like, in the sun and stuff like that. Like, I see a lot of animals. I see a lot of shapes mm. that weren't there. And um, I still see – I still see – see shapes and those are like a whole new thing and i didn't know that was like a thing but i see like squares and triangles that appear and bells and do stuff you like see that. refrigerators in front of you <laughs> i don't see refrigerators does moses ever say i love you and you're like i'm hearing things <laughs> <laughs> it must be <laughs> i mean honestly and what it's i know right i wish i could control like what i hear from people because it's always it's always just random stuff too it's yeah. never um but yeah the medication helps so much like with it because do you mind if i ask which which what you're on it's called like klepta klepter mm-hmm. Klepto. I've been called one of those before. <laughs> it's something like I don't I've know been how to say one it. of those. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really difficult. Yeah, it's and something, scary. It's so scary. It's like really scary because I and a lot of people are like you don't just develop because you know people on the internet have like all this like they're expertise. so fucking annoying. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. like you don't just develop it. I'm like I don't know what to tell you. Like I I just started hearing voices like love and light, year. love and light, right? <laughs> love and light, cunt, love and light. <laughs> I know it's like so but I went to two different uh psychiatrists like yeah. I went to two before getting on medication I don't like being on medication I've never like I've been on medication improperly and I got off it right away because those are the only times I've ever been like like suicidal thoughts were on medication I was like never liked it um but so that's the one thing they one. don't tell people that are newly on meds is that the first month that you're on it is the window of time that you should be watched the most because if you have any type of suicidal ideation um let's say for instance you're down into pits um, this is coming from me because I've been in and out of like hospitals on 5150s and whatnot. Oh, I didn't know. And um, so when I had suicidal ideation, it was never when I was the most depressed that I ever tried to hurt myself. It was when I finally got on meds. Mm. And so the suicidal ideation was still there, but now I had the energy to execute. Yes. So now I had the energy to actually carry out what my plan versus just being like this veg- sad vegetable in bed. And so um, that first month is really like what – what like for anybody that's like watching, like watch your family members, watch your kids, watch your loved ones when they're first getting on meds. It doesn't just – it's all better, you know. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Was when you went to the men- when you went to the hospitals, were did you, did you find that they helped you? Because I felt like mine made me like worse. Like they forced medication on me that I shouldn't have taken. Um, I found some really great friends there. Yeah. Um. So the guy you fucked. Yeah, I know. Were they <laughs> were they real? <laughs> were they mental health? Were but they the shaved? third place, the third place I went to in Torrance, and I was there for about three weeks. Um, I didn't know it at that time. I didn't equate it to like bad behavior on his part at that time. But I eventually <laughs> dated um, one of the counselors there. Um, and he asked for my number the day that he was helping me pack. You're like, uh, my number is uh, 16. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't oh know. It's my mom's phone. <laughs> and he was a, he was a dad. Like yeah. he's, he claimed to be a single dad, but now I'm thinking I'm like, oh, maybe you know, maybe. Well, he's it's a always those man. people that are dealing with at risk teens. I don't want to get the molested bell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> molested. I'll get it for you. <laughs> Oh my god! I don't. Yeah, I don't believe in mental. I when I was in my mental hospital, I went to Alhambra. Which one? BHC? Huh? BHC? Is that in Alhambra? Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Have you been? Yes, twice. Oh. That one? <laughs> really? Yes. Oh, oh, no, Esther, are you having FOMO? <laughs> yeah. There's still time, Esther. Don't worry. <laughs> it was just a long hallway, just one long hallway, yes, and it was with like, the rooms on the side on each side. Yeah. Uh huh. And then there was like the room where you color at that corner. Yes. And then you had to go across. Like your level two was you get to go out to dinner across the way to like the dining well, you hall. You got to go out. To oh dinner. my god! Yeah, imagine being a waitress at that place like ooh, Wait, 
Like no. these are not good tippers. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I don't. I wonder how you paid. I guess my family came and visited me because they did visiting hours at like six p.m. or something. Yeah, they, yeah, and they and always visit. say they had like a, your contraband. You weren't allowed to like hold anything in your possession that you could not even like you know, safety oh, pins or anything. Should they check inside you? They check everything. I bet that one did. Because yeah. I, we, everyone is. There. No, they go. They don't go in your vagini. No, they don't. No, but they have guys check on you, like in the middle of the night when they do their checks. Like it's a guy. Ours was a guy that like did a flashlight in there to like, and I'm like, oh, like, and you're like this little sheet, whatever. And then the ED unit's like connected to it. So like the people who were going through like their eating disorders, they were like on the other. Side I thought of it was it. erectile dysfunction. I was like, <laughs> they get a, a area in their own section. I'm like, that's crazy. Oh my god, no, it was like, and it would, you know, and you. It was so it was so uncomfortable because like you could go across the way to the dining hall, but if you didn't do that, you had to eat there, and like the people with the ED would be there too. So it was like uh -huh. so. Oh, wow. Well, that yeah. was what was um, interesting is that we did have a lot of girls with eating disorders mm -hmm. there, and um, we were just all mixed in together, and we would have group yeah. therapy together. So it was like a very like I learned a lot about all the other different things that people were going through, um, and so. For that reason, um, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a good experience. Like it was more of like a learning experience. Well, you were very yeah. empathetic. Did you, did you ever like? Did you think you like took on their eating disorders a little bit? No, I had. I, my mom is a fucking bodybuilder. Of course, I was she meant was to have sad. an eating yeah. disorder, uh, <laughs> but that wasn't my main issue. My main issue was like a whole lot of like obviously like childhood like yeah. sexual trauma and stuff like that. That's, so yeah, um, mine too. Oh, yeah, can I, can I ask you about borderline because I feel like that's a really big one that. You hear a lot about, but I've never heard from anyone from doctors, <laughs> yeah. from my own therapist. I've never, I've never heard anyone say like I was diagnosed with borderline. Oh, there's a ton on TikTok now. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like yeah. I'm on BPD TikTok. Yeah, there's a lot. It's so funny because like it became somewhat like trendy now this borderline and mm -hmm. so but then when you like exhibit borderline behaviors people are like oh like too much you know what i mean yeah which is serious yeah it is because there's like episodes and you know you you there it's just always manic high manic lows i mean it is what it is and you gotta con you gotta just control it and with bbt there's no medication for it so it's like you i go to dbt classes which mm. is like group therapy classes so i'm in two group therapies now and so um it's, it's expensive right isn't it like it's yeah, yeah it's something you have to it's put a lot of so expensive on. and what's the, expensive the the therapy the group my therapy. boyfriend was and if you're yeah. in the group therapy, you have to be in individual therapy. Yeah. So you have to be in both at the same time, like simultaneously. And it's like, it's super expensive. Work, yeah. yeah. And it's, um, it's a, it's a lot of work and obviously it doesn't happen overnight. So like when people are like, oh, I thought she was getting better. And then she's, it's like, I have gotten so much better. This last blow yeah. up compared to the one in December, like that, it was better if people see it or whatever, but I've gotten better. It's just really trying to regulate your emotions, which is like really hard for me to do. And I like want to snap back. I'm so impulsive and I'm so reactionary. So which is how I ended up in the hospital too. Like the Alhambra, I was just like, I, that was the one where I was forced to go. I was at Cedar sinai and they forced me because I was just so reactionary. You know what I mean? Like I, that's when, we'll just say it, like Jason and David came into the hospital and I just like lost my shit. I took off my clothes. I ran away. I was trying to find a pen to like stab myself and like, it, mm. it was crazy. It was like so intense. So I, um, yeah, then they forced me to go there, but it was just, it's just like really these reactionary things that are just get me in trouble, which is what happened on the podcast. And yeah, it's it's no fun and borderlines. Yeah, a lot. When they came to see you, was it for a fucking vlog though? <laughs> no, no. I was gonna say, I think I would be fucking pissed. Too. I know. Well, it felt that way though because you felt like exploited. Maybe, yeah, um. because Jason had just broken up with me that day, and David was ignoring me because I made a video about him. Like, so I was exiled from the group already. So this yeah. was like four days, five days after I was exiled. So whatever, that's so dramatic. But yeah, they came, and um, my makeup artist was the one that like called nine one and went to the hospital with me, and then he he told like he told Jason like I was back in the middle of the hallway and then I saw David come back and I lost my shit because I yeah. was like no you're the reason like all this shit. I was so pissed I was like why are you here because and I never heard from him since which is why I mean he's so fake because it's like he never was like after like are you okay because Jason came to me visit me at the mental hospital like you know people knew and didn't even like check on me I was like okay fake friends whatever yeah. to even be like I'm not cool with you but like are you okay you know so yeah. like he's it's fine I mean it is what it is it happened so like long ago but yeah the Alhambra one was like crazy. I met this boxer. She's open about it, so I feel like I can. But her name was Mia St. John, and her son. I know her. You do? Mm -hmm. I know of her. Yeah. Yeah, her mm -hmm. son, well, and her late, uh, her first husband, like, they both committed suicide, and the, her Aww. son did it in a mental Poor hospital. <gasps> God. Yeah. And so that's why she was in there, and she was like Aww, saying, like, and then her husband was a famous soap opera actor who who killed himself, too. And mm. she, she talks about it, and I've seen her on stuff, and I've tried to connect with her since getting out of there, but she was in there, like, sharing her story. And I was like, you, where I, like, listen to other people's stories and you're just like whoa and then there's some people in there who are in there for life because they just don't have anywhere else to go and yeah 
It was crazy. I tried to get out there as soon as I could. But This is where it gets a little bit tricky and ties into the whole Britney Spears thing is that like because I learned a lot about conservatorship and, you know, from my understanding of it, it doesn't look as like life like as thieving as Britney Spears situation is like conservatorship is meant to protect like both like the family and the person who's mm-hmm. like ill right yeah and that shit right there when i looked at it i was like oh my god that girl is an, in an actual prison yeah. yeah but i wanted to ask you trish um on a scale of one to ten one being front of me is absolutely oh, over look at her <laughs> look at her so she's I'm doing this for her mother my this is texting me her this to my mom okay. this is her mom okay i'm gonna go for zero to ten. Zero <laughs> being it absolutely over and 10 being full, fully back on, the family is oh, happy, shit. we're doing it. Where where are you today? today? Just you, not even, uh, ir- uh, like just regardless of what Ethan's feelings are. Like right. how do you feel today? Uh, I think if you asked me this like yesterday, I would have said like 10, I'm ready to come <gasps> back. But today it's a 0. 0.5. Because after he's like, the family hates Trish, I was like, this motherfucker. Like yeah. I was like, that is not true. So I think that really set me back. Like, Could you just... though look at it like this? Like, And I could be completely wrong. Could you look at it knowing that the family doesn't hate you? Could you yeah. look at it like those are his tools he's using to try to trigger you and not be triggered by it? trigger me and not be triggered. <laughs> That's a Wait, lot of like, could you see like no could you see like if you know like right. you have a great relationship with the family yeah right? mm-hmm. and you trust that mm-hmm. yeah for sure so him saying that to you is a dig at you yeah. but it's not the truth for sure, for your, sure. Right. it's yeah. coming from a, a place of hurt and he, or, yeah can you i can't speak for him his, though right <laughs> as like him. could you see that as that's his attempt to get you to be triggered and then is there a way for you to just like Reflect it all. Yeah, like, like let it go. Like, like, like shine the light on it. Because I need that number to go up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> for my yeah. mom. For my mom. Right. <laughs> um. I mean, you know what? I, I'll just say I don't know if I should say this, but it's fine. Whatever. So he actually asked me to come do like one final episode on Monday, right? Like, mm. but I don't. Just be like between us, because after that, I was like, I don't really trust it. Yeah. Because I saw him do this like, interview with like a conservative person, like this yeah. debater. Did the, you see that? The, like prank thing. Yeah, Stephen Crowder, and then he yeah. like did a switch. He kind of like ambushed him and switched him with like a mm. someone to debate him, and it was like it was a little tricky. And I he hasn't told me details, and because he did that, and because he said I do not accept a trust apology, I think it's in, like it almost feels like a setup where he may be trying to ambush me. Mm. That's how I'm feeling I like right trust now. that instinct. Right. That sounds, so, yeah, like it's. I, but originally I said yes. I wanted to come on because he has merch made. And is, I was like, I'll is, help you. Is but. there a way for you to have control over that more? Like, can yeah. you have it on your terms? Like, are you able to have him come to you? And like, could yeah. you have a crew filming it? Instead or like, is crew? there some like, contract? <laughs> I think once you. I saw it, because this week he had his parents on and they were just like trashing me. His dad said something about my weight. His <gasps> mom said I was toxic. You look so cute, by the way. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're like the first person I wear. I'm like starstruck in person. Like, you're so pretty. You know? I know. I'm like, I want the hair. I'm going to like really like, I got glam for you guys. This. I don't look like this most of the time. It I'm usually so like short good, hair. Not, I got glam. <laughs> this, we glam for you too, believe it or, <laughs> believe it or not. This is as glam Sadly, as it's going to get. I actually did glam. <laughs> <laughs> you Esther, do so you want, do you, uh, if you give me $5, I'll do your makeup. <laughs> Fiverr. You're, are you a Fiverr employee? Didn't you get my ex-boyfriend one? on Fiverr? No, I saw your ex-boyfriend on TaskRabbit. Oh, is there a better, <laughs> is there a fucking better revenge? And I'm a very good friend for telling. <laughs> yeah, that is literally the funniest but thing But I'm ever. just gonna go ahead and say, like, I cannot live without TaskRabbit, so really? kudos to him and all the side hustlers there. What's TaskRabbit? Oh, true, yeah. No, yes. we don't, Dave is so not a man, he can't even hang oh. posters on our wall. We, ha- we have, like, a hot guy off TaskRabbit who comes and does everything for us. Is oh, it's it? like a handy? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a like handyman. It's an app for a hand. It's a like Uber for handyman. Um, I'm gonna call it. We're gonna take a banana break yes. on the show, Trish. We have this thing <laughs> called when the feelings are high, we bring them back down with a banana. Every episode, what? We have a little, yeah, we have like a little. It's like a relaxed chit chat. A little. Po- it's a potassium reup. Mm-hmm. 
Do I get anything today? Down. Do you want actually my banana? No, no, you, no. She doesn't partake in bananas. Banana so you don't have to. Right? No, I will. I want. Oh my god, oh, this yeah. is. I'll eat a banana. Whenever yeah. we need Wait, Esther hang to on, do you something, need... we just need Trish to come do it in front of her. <laughs> Wait, what happened? You don't like bananas? Usually they have a separate fruit for me because I don't like bananas. But when oh. I went to go visit my parents, they were like giving me shit about it. So. Trish, do you want a less bruised banana than that? I actually like bruised bananas. Okay, I do. I'm like a. That is. It's nice and mushy. Such a cute. Metaphor. I like so, a bruised banana. I dated many bruised bananas myself. I, uh, yes, I am a bruised banana. I am. Oh, this is so cool. So, what's the potassium do? Um, she, you know, she's the nurse. I just, it's just an electrolyte re up oh. for me. Um, also, I have a heart condition and potassium is my best friend. So, what is, is it, was that related to your implants or it's just separate? Um, we don't know. We don't know because I was an athlete for a really long time. Oh. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I have, um, my heart rhythm goes awry, and so like if I'm sleeping, it'll go up to like 230 <gasps> beats a minute, and it'll stay there, and I can't breathe. I get sweaty, clammy. But I had surgery for it. Did you get depressed? Like you know how when you get open heart surgery, you get depressed because it's like you can't trust your body. Um, oh. I was depressed way before that already. The whole not trusting my body thing was a big thing. Yeah. Um, and also it's, it gets weird when you're sick and like your partner sees you as someone that's sick? Mm. Oh my God, what a boner killer like, for him. Oh, really? Wait, really? Is it? No, that's the opposite for me. I, mean, I love being the sick one. Like, that's like sexual for me. Because like, <laughs> you, like, you want to be taken care of. Yeah. I, I feel the same way. I'm always like, I mean, I don't want to get sick, but I'm like, oh, because Moses would be the best caregiver and I'd be like, oh, it's so hot. <laughs> but also, I, yeah. like when my, whenever I've broken my foot or something, like I've gotten hit on by like every guy who's like, <laughs> trying to rape me. I'm like, Jesus Christ, because well, I can't like run away. You're catchable. They, like, they love that like, yeah, you're now within reach. You're catchable. Yeah, you're a wounded bird. No. Hobble Sick, away. Man. I think that's why they have big boobs, too, because it hurts too much to run. <laughs> They're like, ah, I can trap your ass. So that's so interesting. Do you have thoughts on like the future of like your podcasting life? Oh, I would never do like another one. Like if it, like if it, like I because it was so perfect. Like Esther starts crying. She's like, I was just oh, about to. Yeah, no, I wasn't <laughs> going to ask you anything. By the way, can we just say that she just said potassium's her best friend? I'm just imagining you doing a frenemies with it's just you and a banana <laughs> fighting. No. And me and Annie are outside. Let, let us in. I don't know. Can we get a little bit of this? That's kind of cute. an animated banana, and we can call it bruised banana. Oh my God, that's cute. So cute. Okay. My banana, this banana life. <laughs> and you should. Fuck you guys. Yeah. <laughs> You're out. That's the saddest thing I've ever heard. That's so, so you smart. would you my, would never do another podcast. Potassium's my best friend. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. It would because I did my own yeah. and it wasn't like fun by myself. Like yeah. I like having someone. Like I, I like going on podcasts. I love like talking mm -hmm. to people. Doing it by myself was like awful. Like I don't like I I have a YouTube channel for that. I don't know. I, I don't kind of imagine. Or also, it might be me too that I just don't have that that time commitment. You know, yeah. like I feel like maybe I sabotage in a way because it's like after a while I kind of just get over things and it's like a commitment every week. Yeah, and I like doing it, especially because during quarantine. But I don't know, maybe. I loved your music video, by the way. <laughs> I feel like you should take your time for that type of stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like what? when you have an idea, just like execute it to its like fullest potential. I love music pipeline videos. for the music video. So I'm big. I my dream is to one day collab on a music video. Did you wait? So you do like put out music? Well, she's a dancer. I I did a oh. I sang a song. She was a hand I model. She's a dancer. There's a lot. <laughs> I put a music video in my comedy special, so I've never like self-produced like I know you do, but I am a huge musical theater freak. Oh no, I know, I loved, like I was obsessed with Crazy Extra Fire, I like wanted to be on that show, but I was like, this is the show, because she was borderline and she loved musical theater, and I was like, that's me. I loved that show, I was oh like obsessed. Gosh, yeah, so cool. when I saw you on there and you were doing, I think there was like a colonial one you were doing, yeah. and I was just like, <laughs> that's my dream. But, oh my God, I loved it. My, um, this, this guy I dated, he was on that show, he was like the Santa Claus, and I was like so jealous he got to go on. I want to go to set so bad and he like wouldn't let me. It was so cool. I was like, oh, I just love that show. I remember your Smash music video and I thought that was amazing. Oh, <laughs> Smash. Did oh you my gosh. I, I, watched I live it. for yeah. a Smash. I yeah. live for Christian Bohr. I love the Broadway community. Like that's where I want to be. So that's why I do my own music videos. But I'm not the talent. I'm not talented enough to do that. I just. You I should like make a one woman show. I'm also not talented enough for that. Like what you guys do with comedy, like it's so hard. Esther, I did stand well, up. Esther and, is like, oh, you did do stand up? I did it once for like a show. Are oh, you? Oh, come on in. Bobby, come babe. In panda underwear. I forgot that you were doing Bobby, let's see her undies. I'm so sorry. Come on in. <laughs> Bobby. I forgot my underwear. I just woke up. Please. <laughs> Come in. Come here, babe. Quickly. Bobby. Babe, quickly. I, I, I swear to fuck, I forgot. I oh, you look up. so cute. I know. You look cute. I know, but I, I just woke up. I fucked up. Bobby. Oh, my God. How was it last Come night, here. Bobby? Come here. Sit here. <laughs> Bobby, how I was it? I have coffee. I'm not even, good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> I, I, I but just coffee. get in front of the camera enough that Bobby we see. Or something for, for what? 
You look so good. <laughs> Let him see you. The pant underwear is everything. Uh, do a dance. I woke up and I, 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 here, here. I sleep. Oh my god. Oh my god. I love it. Bobby, I like your new hair too. She still has all the, the sleep markings. Under. You're so It's okay. You caught, us, you caught us in the banana break. We're still good. Oh, you have bananas? Yeah. You have less <laughs> nipple hair than all of us except Trisha. I shaved down here too. Okay. Well, oh. oh no. Bye. I love no, you. No, <laughs> Go, get out of here. <laughs> yes. I want to thank Manskin. Can I show you? I can yes, yes. 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 Let's I see it. All the way oh, it looks good. I spot last night. And then I didn't, I didn't shave the um in between the um. The sack and the thighs, so it looks weird. Mullity? Yeah. It's a little mullity. God, you're my favorite weird. little lesbian. Can you give was, me a kiss? What? How was last night? Was it good? I killed. I bet you fucking did. <laughs> yeah. It's going to grow, I, Bobby. I it's going to grow. I killed with everyone where I am in the room. I killed for seven minutes. The beginning seven or the last seven? I didn't do 15. Oh, you just oh. got off. Good for I you. I did seven. <laughs> and oh. I just said, that's good. Good. And then everyone was like, <laughs> and I go, Kirk Fox. Just, was this in the store? Yeah. Did Ooh, Kirk I do, do seven. more? You can do whatever you want. Yeah, just do whatever you want. I'll do seven. I do 70 because, sometimes. Because fuck faces <laughs> do 20 or 30. Yeah. Right? So if you do seven, it all... Do you say fuck faces? Fuck faces. like cute. Like, <laughs> girls, like sometimes do that. No. Bye, babe. <laughs> Bye. She liked it until Bye, it babe. got too... It was like an expose. <laughs> Is he on camera? This is what I love about Bobby. <laughs> he didn't want to come in, but once it's we got okay. him. <laughs> okay, okay, have fun, have fun. Bye, Bobby. There? Uh, there should be. There is. Like, not his job. <laughs> there is, it. is there a Red Bull in there? There should be. There isn't. That's the funniest interaction I've ever heard in my life. Is that uh, how he sleeps? Yeah. That is so in funny. My, in my panty? Cute. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, yours? <laughs> we share. We share underwear. I love it. What is that? Oh, I got one in my bag. I always carry one in my bag. Oh. It's nice Wait, and you, warmed. You guys don't share underwear with your um, Are you lovers? crazy? No. no. I cannot. No, I cannot fit into his underwear. Um, <laughs> so little. We I'm share clothes. Little, yeah. <laughs> All of our, from head to toe, socks, everything, we share everything. Oh it's perfect because um, he wears he everything puts the under holes his. In the socks, you stick your toes through them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The socks she was wearing last time were, yeah. were rough. Well, he wears everything under his belly, so um, he actually fits, he buys um, pants sized to me. And that's we great. share. Wow, yeah. That's cute. I love his clothes. He's skinny. He's so skinny. Yeah. It's, it's so weird how I, I've always said this too. I feel like everyone looks better naked. I really do. I agree. I think that too. I feel like me, I look better naked. I don't look as like fat naked. I don't know. Me clothes too. can bulk you up if you don't want to dress. Yeah. More people should just be naked. He looks so skinny. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. So <laughs> I went, because he always calls himself like what? Like a meatball or something. And I'm like, oh, he's like tiny. He's like a spaghetti noodle. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. I want to come see you guys at show. When are you guys at Comedy Store? I want to come. This weekend I'm there. Are you there this I'm going to be a little while. Um, I'll probably start going in a couple weeks. I just I've been taking a break, but uh, you're on the road back. again soon. Yeah, in the fall I'm gonna go. Yeah, through oh, I love st- I love stand up. I do. What was Wait, your you stand up experience? You did stand up. I, yeah, it was a show. It was a show and an improv. I think yes. I saw on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh it was God, like a Esther. show. <laughs> I know everything about her. I'm not gonna pretend I don't. <laughs> I did so many like comedy. No, I, it was like one where you're like a mentored by like a stand up. Oh. I, I can't think of a guy's name that mentored me now. And so like yeah, you, you practice for like a day and then it's all. I don't want to watch it. It's so cringe. It's so it's so hard. Like I can never do stand up. Like, but I think yeah. you're you're you have true comedic instincts and you're very funny. Like you you're clearly like there's something comedic about you. Like don't you you must agree. Yeah, I yeah, right. People are, she's so funny, but I do think it is um I don't know. I'm really bad at like having to make jokes up on the spot. You know what I but mean? But also maybe because you said that you like podcasting better with another person, maybe you would be better at maybe improv or at um, doing crowd work. So you're like talking to people rather than just yeah. like on one up there. It's also, there's like stage fright you have to get through. Yeah. And- how how stand-ups can just go up there and like tell stories and like make, that's like. Practice. It's just practice. But I think that's like, you have to know how to just stand up there and be funny for like an hour. I don't know how people do it. It's so, it's you like. F- you have to fail at it a lot before. Yeah. Really? Bomb yeah. machine. You have to become a bomb machine. It just has to stop. <laughs> hurting and then it's like easy it's also like the delivery all that stuff is like an art it, it's really cool i love watching like stand-ups i think that's like so cool i did that show who wants to be a comedian i want and i won and the guy was the greg the greg something he has was it? the greg wilson do you know him uh-uh oh, oh my god oh, wait greg I'm so, wilson his name was like the greg wilson i oh, do he, know him it was like a show yeah. where yeah it was trish weird. why why no, did greg you Warren. end up um dating comedic comics and like how did you end up like mixed in with that scene well 
so I worked. I, I we talked about the guy that was creepy that like hit on you too. That guy that sold meat. Remember last episode, mm-hmm. the one that sold meat out of his truck. Oh, so he I, hit on me too. Yeah, he's, he's oh he still hits on me, and I'm like engaged, and he like hits me up. I and, feel so insulted. I've not been hit on by the meat man. <laughs> <laughs> he sold me out of his like truck. Like vegans are hitting on me. No, but, but, but you like worked a, at the comedy store. Yeah, so I would be there because like I did that show for Laugh Factory, the one with Dom Herrera. It was like a court case show so mm-hmm. I like I just was like there a lot and then I like was an assistant to that one comedian and I've assisted like other comedians um so I think I was just like always like around and I, I was just like a fan I was like a groupie until I because I thought oh comedians they you know they're so self-deprecating they must like hate themselves too but they're like the biggest narcissist mm-hmm. so I was just I thought they were gonna be like cute and like the nerdy guys because it's comedy and comedy's like not hot but they like think they're like rock stars it's they, so cr- I've been, yeah. I had to completely stop dating comedians Esther never. did too yeah it's never like, again it's so disgusting mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so, but I will say my last talk boyfriends like their best laughs I'm like I wrote that shit <laughs> <laughs> really I'm sitting in the back like I wrote that that's mm-hmm. yeah I mm, yeah I just I never I but it just I ended up being like like writing for them and stuff it was like I was like their and how does that uh, work you write for someone and do they like give you credit or you they can no, just no like, they don't give you fucking credit really so no. you just do it for fun or they, well, they hire you well we just be you? like hanging out and like I mean they would give me tags too but it's like you just like oh. I mean I kind of am a tag giver too which annoys people I try to give Esther ones, she's, but she won't do them. <laughs> <laughs> give me the thing. I, I'm refusing to be, go on stage uh, in that stage of being a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> it is a weird time having like had all this time off. Where From it's COVID, like, yeah. I'm like now back very excited about it. But last night I was like, I'm going on with no plan. And I had a heckler, which was kind of okay. But it was, you know, it's like I go back and forth. It's just like now I'm like looking at it like each time. It's like I just want to have a different experience. So I'm probably banned now because I talk so much shit about like all yeah. male comics. I never had a bad experience like a female. Like yeah. never. I don't think. It's different like now. The comedy store, the booker, um, the booker's a female and then she gets help from another woman. And it's like very feels like the vibe feels very feminine. That's good. Yeah, it's I really feel like cool. they needed that maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, things got flushed out. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Would you say that your public persona like when you when you just you as Trish when you do YouTube videos are you kind of playing a character like a little bit huh I don't know I would say I like now I feel like I'm not but who knows I feel like I do feel like I become like a little bit of a different person when I have like hair and makeup versus when I don't people notice that all the time I do think it's also like also just like something wrong with me that I like switch personalities because I'm very like uh who I'm around I try and be like you know what I mean so I relate to that yeah so I think you know when I and then when I'm in like glam I feel like I'm a little more ditzy and I'm a little more you know daring and bold as opposed to when I'm ugly I'm like oh my god Trisha don't be stupid like don't be annoying (laughs) I don't know maybe maybe I think I'm pretty authentic to myself I feel like if you know me like off camera and I feel like I'm pretty much the same as opposed to someone like Ethan who's like really like loud and stuff on camera but it's like really sweet and like quiet like off camera so it's like he's I a lot of people are like that you know they're really on and then you like see them behind camera and they're like really just like Mm -hmm. it's also weird I also think it's it's a way um I know for me, like, I try to be – I think that I'm being as authentic, let's say, on a podcast. But when the cameras are on, I'm so, like, conscious that they're on. And I also, Mm. like, I'm so anxious that they're on. So I don't think that – like, I think that these girls know who I really am, like, outside of here. Because I – not that, you know, I could just be my most comfortable. Not as well as potassium, though. You're (laughs) (laughs) But I think that it's a way to also, like, protect yourself to sort of – play up this like persona yeah. so that you keep a little bit of yourself to just you like only my family really knows me in this capacity like at least for me I think I think I used to be like that like I used to be like this like really hardcore dumb I was trying to be like so like you know I love Trump and just like anything that was opposite of me because I thought like if it wasn't me then no one knew so I think I used to be like that a lot I try and be more authentic but I it is it is hard I think on cameras I don't know yeah it's okay. hard to know like I yeah. I feel like I've had people ask me that like are you really like that or are you just playing a character? And that's – and I'm always like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like kind of blurred because you're used to playing like characters. So you're like, I don't know if this is like – Well, sometimes yeah. with Esther, I'm like, you don't know what a noogie is? I'm like, is that real? And then she really doesn't know what a fucking noogie is. We gave her is. a noogie right. for the first time last episode. Oh, how'd that go? But I'll be like – I'm like I'm like <laughs> wanting it to be a character. I'm like, she you don't know what – nice. <laughs> oh. She yeah, liked it. Was, it was like a gentle one. Are you an only child? I'm a half only child, so I have a half older sister who's seven years older. Oh, okay. So you weren't getting like nuggied no. as a kid. No. <laughs> yeah, wedgied? No wedgies, no. I don't. That shit is like, that's like 
isn't that illegal? It's like yeah, assault, it's probably. Yeah, yeah, now it is for sure. Or the wet willies where they would like lick it and put oh, it in your ear. A guy, my <laughs> guy friend did that to me. We didn't talk for six months. Really? It is disgusting. It's, like, yeah, it's horrible. Get your spit off. It's, get your COVID out of my fucking ear. <laughs> yeah, it's so nasty. I have some weird um, ear sensory issues, so you cannot touch my ear. Like really? that's like. Have you seen um something about Mary Warren? Yes. The kid who has to wear ear muffs. Like that's me. If you fuck with my ears or come close to it, like I'm putting hands on oh you. Oh my god! What yeah, is so it? I understand the wet willy thing, Esther. Oh, um, so- I have bad ears. Like I have swimmer's ears, so there I grew up with a lot of like ear infections and just like sensitivity around it. Oh, wow. So like I don't, I don't like. You know who gives wet willies though, and it's actually so funny is John Cleese. The guy yeah. from, it's so funny. Like when you meet him, and his he, daughter is a comic, yeah, right? Camilla, Camilla? yeah. She's yeah. Great. But so he like he'll like reach around like hug you and then like in a picture get, and it's there. I'm telling you, he's like someone that I grew up like idolize. It's the funniest. But no, if he you, wouldn't if be you, able to reach. I honestly think he's very tall. I don't know if he would even if, be able to. I don't care who you are. That's what absurd. if you idolize them? Like do you have someone that you're obsessed with? Like Lady Gaga. You? <laughs> could she give you? Could she give you a wet willy? What if Lady Gaga gave you? No, 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 no. no if Lady no, Gaga no. gave you a wet willy. No, that's like it's a real violent. now. Okay. Now we know Hang it's on. real. Now Hang on. Know. Then what would you say? How would you say? What? Well, how would you reject her wet willy? I'd be like Gaga, like. Nana, Gaga, Nana, 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 I would be, I, I, ah, I don't know. I guess I'd be like. Would you put po- po- poker face? <laughs> no, sorry. What if she just did it? Would you be pissed or would you be like, oh, it's fine. Like would, it happened. I would have to move on quickly because I love her so much. But, and I would probably, my time is probably limited, but that would be tricky. I don't know. That's fucking oh violation. I want to I want to see what Esther's like when her time's limited with me. She's never had limited time with me. I've always given her all the unlimited, time. I, <laughs> I would let my idol like shit on me. I wouldn't care. Yeah, I would be like just do it. You know, like um I love Gerard Way from my chemical romance. I would mm-hmm. definitely let him like shit on me. I would what Pamela part? Anderson. Like straight in the chest? Like a hot car? I feel like chest is like very sexual. So maybe since I'm engaged, maybe like on my face so it's not sexual. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just gross. I'd just be like, oh yeah, that's him. I love yeah. Him. Love him. Oh, he's like my... Oh, he'd be so... Is like, he your sad boy 2005 it. by oh, like, inspiration? Yeah, we copy every music video from them. Like we are an unofficial MCR tribute band. We So instead of doing their music because we don't want to get copyright, I just like wrote songs to fit the music videos that I love from them. But we do a shot by shots of all their videos. We have one next week that's like a $300,000 music video and it's oh, their World God. War II one and we got like a World War II boat. We're like that's on the so beach. Cool. Like are we you? got bomb explosions. Yeah, I'm, I literally, I just was like, I would, I was, I keep saying this on every podcast I go on, but I'll say it again in case he's listening. If you perform at my wedding, I'd give him my life savings right now as of this day to perform <laughs> one song. Because I'm walking down the aisle to Helena. I and love so, Helena. It's my favorite Such song. You gotta cry to that song. It's so like that song like resonates with me with yeah. so like I uh, I'm just like Esther. You have to get this to happen. <laughs> this is your I way. Know, in. You have so many connections. So I'll, if you can get that to happen, I mean, we look alike. <laughs> <laughs> Esther's just gonna dress like him and show up. <laughs> just show up and sing. We definitely I, look alike. No, Esther, you're Dave Grohl forever. I know. I look like. Dave oh, Grohl. I love Dave Grohl though. By the way, Dave Grohl was at the party that you couldn't make it to at <gasps> Whitney. Had a party oh, yeah. at, that was like for the. It was like a. She put on like an unofficial premiere for the craft. The craft yeah. And Dave Grohl was there, and I tried to take a picture <gasps> with him for you. And Whitney was like, "Get away from him!" And I was like, "Okay." okay. <laughs> you <laughs> do know everybody. Yeah, Everywhere you're like, at, like Dave Grohl. It's, I mean, <sighs> I'm blessed. If you see him, text me. He doesn't go out. He's like a recluse. But if you ever see him, text me. I would drop everything. Actually, I probably I'd be too scared to meet him. Actually, I don't think I would. I don't know. Don't. Yeah. You drop a lot of money on these music videos. It's the best. Yeah, Do like you way make too it much. Back? No, uh, no, I make like a thousand dollars on a music video. Maybe not even that. I want to clarify what music. I liked your music video to Moses. That was yes, the one I was talking one. about. Oh, that one is beautiful. That's, yeah. that was so cute. Oh, they, we have another one coming out together that really? we're doing. Yeah, it's all in Hebrew, actually. Yeah, oh, the whole Hebrew song. But um, thank you. That's so funny. It's so funny because that was like meant to be like funny and a joke, and people like that got the it most was so cute. Anything. Thanks. Yeah, I liked having him on there. He used to play like Jesus in like um, like TV shows and stuff like that. So I think like it was made sense for like biblical mm-hmm. Moses to come out. Um, oh, that means a lot. I love. It. I love having him in music videos. He's gonna be. He's gonna be in this next one. He'll be. I just want him in everything. Does I'm he like sad. being in them? Yeah, I think so. Really? Yeah, because he like acted briefly for a short time in his life as Jesus, and I feel like 
He's he's not a he's what a not career. Like, yeah, <laughs> he was he was Jesus in like everything. But I, I and think, also yeah. an actual architect. Jesus was an architect and a wood maker, is, like a carpenter. He's literally a carpenter. He makes like tables out of wood. He's literally Jesus. It's so he crazy. is Jesus. Yeah, and he's he's born in Israel. Like he's you know I was like oh my god, just right by Bethlehem. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, Bethlehem's in Palestine, I guess now. But what do you think the specific goal was for Israel to pay? Because Bobby went there for three weeks. And so they they pay it's like an all expense paid vacation and it was just a, a bunch of um, Asian Americans so it was Bobby Lee what? Steve Byrne and a couple <laughs> other like big people and Asian people in the industry and they were there for a while and they got like wine and dine what? why <laughs> they Did he just perform? want people to stay they want to convert them they're like convert go. oh yeah. maybe weird. I don't know yeah do they did he perform there no was he single at the time no we were together weird I was like can can I I'm Jewish. The <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> yeah. That is so – I feel like that reminds you like how like you hear the stories how hot models in L.A. get like all expenses paid stuff. Yeah. Like Dubai and yeah. all those things. That mm. could be – I mean, I think Moses, all his girlfriends over there were Asian. I think they were like Filipino mm. and stuff. So I don't know if there's a tie in there. But like Oliver, when he dated over there, and he's like – I'm like, oh, that's that your preference that you like, you know, eat? Like, I'm sorry. And he's like, no, it just like it happened to be that. <laughs> you apologize. You're like, I'm so sorry. I'm not Asian. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. I apologize well, for everything. you can become one now, we found out. <laughs> Wait, what if they sent Bobby – there to like try and take the Asian women away from the Jewish men so that <laughs> the Jews would be together and the Asians would be together? Oh, I don't know. Well, I just feel like yeah. Asian women find their way everywhere because I like all the Mexican <laughs> boys that used to come to um, Santa Fe to work in the restaurants. Yeah. They would like they were the like, rich kids in Chihuahua. They would come work at the restaurants and like live in Santa Fe for mm-hmm, like six months mm-hmm. and I would always bang them um <laughs> weigh tables with them but um they would always have like asian girlfriends back home in mexico mm. i just feel like you're like the asian community is like we're we're down we're going yeah i think they're yeah. just we're open. spreading out 90 yeah. day fiance is always like from philippines yeah. stuff like that i think they're just open to like i hate the yeah, way the filipinos are portrayed though on 90 day fiance you do? it really there. hurts my feelings get on there. i don't wait wait what okay i think i can get you on there i, oh, I loved ed and rose um, but do you I think that's bad? really bad. Oh, that's controversial. Well, I, like, oh, okay, I like Rose, I guess. Right, I, right, right. I do yeah. like Rose. Okay, okay. I just like, uh, they gave him too much of, um, too, too much of a platform to make people think that she was only in it for, like mm. it, it's as if it wasn't both ways, as if there weren't yeah. things to be had for both of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And not to say that she isn't opportunistic, but it's like, dude, like, you were in it for something too. You like, hope let's call she's this, this is a fucking. Right. He yeah. was like really not. <laughs> call it what it is, like a mutual transaction. Yeah. Like she's not taking advantage of you. You're equally taking advantage yeah. of her. Oh my god, the ulcer so thing true. was where I just that lost is, it when he got I, her the toothbrush. No, oh. I'm so angry at that because yeah. poor Rose. She was like, oh, like, like I, I have, have a stomach ulcer. ulcer. Like I can't like control Ugh. like the acidity of like my breath and stuff. And when I would see her cry because there was I'll a language you. barrier and her not being able to express her rage towards him. Yeah, really made me feel sad, and I'm but like, dude. But it was fun to watch. I mean, she was. You did get to see she was pissed. Like she looked like. I, I think she came out looking good. Thank God. Yeah, she did yeah. leave yeah. him, right? Yeah. Was a, she left the hotel mm-hmm. that they were at. And I like think she, went. yeah, and then she ended up with a, I think she's a woman. A woman, yeah. 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 He really pissed her. She was like, bye. We had, <laughs> we had Ed on Tiger Belly. Oh, you did? Oh. We did. How was it? Did it air? One, one of oh. our remote episodes. Um, He he was nice. He was, as as you would, yeah, perf- himself. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I couldn't, I have, trouble like confronting people like when they're guests on our show because I'm like I don't want to do that now so I feel like I missed my opportunity to be like why'd you do my girl dirty like that you know yeah her breath <laughs> you can do it in a nice way because you're so nice I feel like you could do it in a, like a good way like a way that especially because he probably you know I don't know also I don't know I think I you know, could do Licks it in a way. comes out you gotta watch Licks out and Licks. <laughs> Licks. I didn't FaceTime with this bitch I was like whoa was like, <laughs> bitch I was like whoa <laughs> it does it does take a lot for me to to um, snap but when I do it, it yeah. Um, but I, I, would, I, would say, I would love to get snapped at uh, by you. By, by me. Because I feel like I would just like, I like crave it. Like I just want, I want Esther, you to. Esther, you, if, if I snapped, if I snapped at you, I think that this friendship couldn't, we couldn't recover. I because disagree. I'm going to go for the low blows. <laughs> yeah, that's me too. I'll snap at you. I can do it. In- <laughs> say something, I'll trigger you. Or trigger me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm just, I do it just quicker. I have like a, but I do hold things in too. I think even the thing with me and Ethan, I think I held in so much. And I'm like, I should probably like talk about things. Because then I do snap and then it just becomes like a lot. 
Oh, this is why we get me in trouble. I, sometimes it's like fun. It's like exciting, you know, like to whatever. <laughs> like, like it keeps you on your toes. But we, I don't do it with Moses anymore. But for like the first like six months of our relationship, like I definitely was like on that line of like throwing his keys over the fence and then like we're <laughs> fighting and then we'd make up. Like it was definitely that, but we're, we're not that anymore. Because he ended up leaving. He's like, okay, too many. But now we're now we're cool. You're like, that. okay, I, I saw my the line. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> right. Like, <laughs> exactly. Because yeah. he was always like so cool. I'd like throw his keys out and he'd be yeah. like fine or whatever. But dude, I used to do that to guys. And then when I, I, to Dave I, the first time I was like I think we should just break up and then he was looked at me he's like okay and I was like never mind I'm sorry oh instant regret <laughs> I try so hard to not do that I really try to like really wait until I mean it yeah my favorite part about being on FaceTime with Annie is that when Todd let's say for instance like she you know she he misses it's like something so stupid around the house that maybe he didn't do my favorite thing that makes me laugh so hard is, Todd, you're single. You're yeah. single, okay? Keep that in I mind. I go, well, Todd's single. And I'll be like, wow, you really, like, let me mess the living room up today. This has been you're sitting single. here for all day. And Look at you, single. Todd. You're single. That's just so funny. We don't even really, like, we've gotten into, like, a few fights. It's just usually when I'm PMSing. But um, he, like, he just will do things like, I'll, I'll be like, Hey, can you pass me the remote? And I'll just be like, yeah, can you pass me the remote? Like, he just makes me laugh all the time. It's like, he's always having fake fights with me. It's so funny. You guys met right before quarantine, you uh-huh. said? Yeah, that was us, too. So the quarantine is, like, just forcing you to be together, which it is just was good. So, we had so much fun the whole time. Like, yeah. even when I had, like, my apartment was getting construction. I had an ulcer. Like, all these, our dog uh-huh. got mange. Like, all these stressful things. I still look back, and I'm like, the majority of the day, we, like, laughed and had a good time. Aww. Yeah. We really did have, like, fun. And now that it's getting back to the real world, are you guys, like, still... It's the best. Yeah, yeah. It's, we don't see each other as much because I'm on the road a lot. But he's just like really good with people that are difficult to work with. <laughs> he just like is like you know he's he's yeah. secure. He's securely attached, mm. so it's like really nice. I mm-hmm. have anxious attachment, so like uh, I like. But until Dave proposed to me, I was like a maniac. And then right <laughs> when he proposed, I was like, ah, okay, I can rest. And I was like yeah. playing the wedding. I'm like, get oh, off my dick. Dude. Yeah, I'm like, I don't <laughs> want to get married. I just... <laughs> it, that is so funny. Me too. I feel like... I mean, I want to get married now, obviously. But like, it was so funny. Once I got engaged, I was kind of like, oh, this is all I needed, really. Because yeah. then it just know you wanted me. Yeah. Commitment. Right. Well, that's and why... And chosen. I, you get chosen by them. It's yeah. Like they're like, you're my person. Yeah. Right. And like buying a house together. I was like, oh, this yeah. is like commitment. That's, that's like, a bigger commitment. I'm not leaving. You're not leaving. So like, this are, you know, so I, I am the same way. Because like, I think getting married really is just for like I mean now that we're like planning what I'm like oh it's literally just like a party like it's no different than anything but yeah I don't know are well, you well I, I just know we're all gonna be there so <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah give me your addresses I wanna yeah. like send you guys I'll send you all wedding inv- invites we're getting married in LA and Israel and actually Maui too New York wait are we so. oh invited God. to all three <laughs> uh, can we choose Maui <laughs> yeah, like, one of us wait we're all in a fight by then we all have to pick <laughs> one wait Esther we're all in a fight by then we all have to pick one of the weddings one of us is stuck with LA well I'll, you don't like vacation I'll do LA. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I have to give you Maui. No, no, no. I've been to Maui many times. All right, I you can Maui, take Maui. I'll take Israel. Israel. I've never been to Israel. Oh, I'm going birthright. I can't, wait to see, I can't wait to see the banana in a tux that you take. <laughs> that would be so iconic because literally no one from here is really coming to Israel. Like we've invited people and said no, but that'd be everything. We should come. Oh, our only American guests are you and Bobby. <laughs> I mean, Trisha, I can't even tell you. I am so there. Really? That. Oh, I'm so, I'll, I'll send you guys all yeah. three invites. Go yeah. Choose which one you want. Oh all well, our <laughs> producer is flagging us down. Is it too harder? Are we or is Trisha coming back? Like, how do we? What You've got to come go? back to us, Trish. This was fun. I very love easy. It. Yours, you fit in so oh, well here. Thank you. I this is like yeah, this is my first like all female podcast, and I like love it. It was so, it feels so good. It and feels positive. so good. I feel like we're all like the right amount of just like open and not embarrassed about. Yeah. <laughs> No, you guys are open about everything. Like, it's insane, like, what you guys talk about, which is kind of everything. Like, that's cool. Because I always thought, like, I was, like, this unicorn because I'm, like, everyone's, like, wow, you're too much. But you guys talk period blood. Also, I was, like, oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. Love it, though. I love talking well, about it. Last episode, we are talking about dried cum on our stomach. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, George. <laughs> Esther, you're bringing it up again. Esther is our cum queen. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I just I don't. I call for artists to do, uh, to do a Kalila with a banana this time. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to come queen, guys. Let's just move queen. on. Yeah. Let's just <laughs> exit gracefully. <laughs> he just dubs over it kumquat. kumquat. <laughs> <laughs> Trisha, I am so grateful that you took the time to come and do this and hang out with us. And I want to know 
where like I know we've got sad boy music <laughs> sad boy 2005.com yes. for the merch yes. is there a new drop coming soon yeah mm -hmm. we have a we have another line coming out September and then we have like a store opening in November where <laughs> that's just me spending money it's literally not gonna make any money I'm <laughs> just like wanting to have my own store um it's in Westlake Village it's Holy like Ventura shit. County. It's a little I'm out. Totally coming. Yeah, I wait. I, I think it's more for me to just have like meet and greets and feel Esther's special. Esther's gonna work there. <laughs> I'm can I, can I submit it just for merch. <laughs> for a discount. Yeah, yeah. I really. It'll be fun. It's like Playboy merch. It's kind of like that kind of stuff. The old school Playboy. I love like girls next door. So we have like ours is like a little bunny. Yeah. Love the store. Oh my god! Come to the store. Dude. Come to everything. Esther, the wedding, you the should give Trisha some sleepover by Esther. I would love to. I have uh, yeah. lounge. Oh, I love it. I always see for money. I love it. It's so cute. Yeah, I would love. We'll swap. Yes. <laughs> merch swap. I and have one shirt. I feel like a loser. <laughs> like, oh, is that I your saw, merch? Yeah, I drew this. Oh, that's – I was looking at the whole time. That's so cool. I'm going like, to pick a bone with both yeah. of you first. Both uh -oh. have merch. And I have – none of them have given me one <laughs> item of anything. This is the only one. I had to go to Whitney's house. This is the sister of the traveling shirt. I have one of my own shirt. I had to go – And mine – after it's already sold out. So mine, <laughs> she learned from skims. Mine is held up in the factory. It's coming soon, okay? I have There's high literally hopes. someone holding it up. I have high hopes because you asked for my size. I know. And then there was a production issue, but it's being handled. Okay. Thank you, Esther. Um, and you also have Trish you – ha you have your own skincare. Yeah, trishkin.com. That's in a collaboration with The ad for that was so good. <laughs> I know. The proactive commercial or the, yes. the no, one, Miracle Elixir? Yes, Miracle Elixir. Oh, I had two ads. I did one like Jessica Simpson proactive and then I did oh, the, yeah. and it was like a filter on it and it was meant to be that way but everyone's like, you have a filter on your skin. I'm like, oh, it's supposed to be like 2000s, but okay. <laughs> and then yeah, the Miracle Elixir, which everyone's like, it was pissing Sweeney Todd and I was like, oh, I didn't really like think about it. I was just like, oh, it's cute. I can like sell my Miracle. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just through a small business here. She actually helped me like, clear up my acne and she goes, do you want to like help me like promote it. and I was like yeah so then she kind of like I'm like the face of it but she did it all her name's uh, Charlotte with Glow Skin Enhancement she's here in the valley and she's like really good with like skincare it's like good products people looked it up it's like manufactured here it's shipped here it's made here it's everything so wow yeah, that's it's really incredible cool. yeah it's really good it's actually really good stuff what else what am I missing because I love um, I love that you're you're the entrepreneur you've <laughs> yeah. got it all. What, what am I missing I think that's everything anything coming anything you can hint that, you, that, that might be coming just the weddings we're on a <laughs> wedding tour this year I think that's about it the wedding some new and, positions in some, the morning at night. Some new positions. Yeah, if you want to see that, it's onlytrish.com. <laughs> $5. And your YouTube know. channel, your videos are always so entertaining. And I love that they're, I love when you yeah. eat, when oh, you review fast food. Yes. I love, well, our yeah. original plan, which we'll maybe do down the road, was uh, to give you all of your 7 Eleven favorites. <gasps> but then we saw that you were on um, a current. Um, a fitness um, journey and we yeah. didn't want to derail you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I just try and eat healthy like two of the three meals a day. Or I try and do like three of the – seven days of the week I try and eat healthy mm. I thought you so. say three of the seven meals I was like yeah three meals a day I'm like <laughs> yeah. I haven't done three meals a day for a long time no I, I, I'm trying but I, I do eat like I still eat still so <laughs> yeah thank you nice I have been so much fun yeah this was Thanks, great I know we'll see everybody next time bye guys bye You're guys gonna come back? thank you yeah please <laughs>